Welcome to Park You In on this busy day of Cork County Championship Finals for the 123rd staging of the Cork Junior Hurling Championship with a novel pairing of both Harbour Rovers and Liz Gould who both debuted today in their first ever County Junior A Hurling Championship Final. My name is Patrick Mulcahy and I'll be bringing you through today's game here on the Irish Examiner live stream. Before we go through today's, today's teams, let us hear from both camps. Momentarily, we will hear from Liz Gould manager, Jerry Ryan. But firstly, let's head to Avondu to hear from Harbour Rovers PRO, Noel Sheehan. So I'm with Harbour Rovers PRO, Noel Sheehan. And Noel, thanks very much for joining us. Big game uh, this afternoon. But this year so far, it's been an intriguing, I suppose, couple of months. You had to wait for an Avondu replay since last October, which he played in June. You defeated Kilchanik and you defeated Kilty in last week's semi-final. That's right, uh, Patrick. Absolutely delighted to be here, Patrick. And um, um, thanks very much uh, for having us. Uh, this year was unusual in that we were waiting so long. It was a replayed Narcock final against Kilchanik, who brought us to extra time last year. And at that in that particular match, we were leading them by four points at extra time. Uh, and scores were very, very hard to come by. A point was very hard to get. And we got no score after that, and they finished uh, level with us. So we knew what to expect in the replay. They're a very formidable team, very young team, up and coming. They'll be heard of soon enough, I'd say. But we had more experience because in the last 10 years, we have been in North, five North Cork finals, winning three of them in the recent past. Losing to Kildare in the first one in 2012, they went on and won the county. When we went out in the county a few years ago, we lost to Dungorny, and we also lost to the Sars, who are two very, very good teams, both from the Immaculate Division. But we were waiting and waiting and due with all the COVID. It was very, very difficult. The grass above the field was getting very, very long, and we mm. were hearing that Kilshenny were training and all this sort of stuff. Whether they were or not, we couldn't tell you. It was in the homes and in the gym and whatever. And, you know, we, we kept it going, but we, we put in... An, a merciful effort get to get to this county final. Now, we had the benefit of a boy before Clannacilty, which the school didn't have. So that extra match that Clannacilty had could have stood to them a bit better. We knew it was a physical strong team being a good footballing stronghold. The same as we are, Pat. We are a footballing stronghold. But after that Kilchanig match, we went down to Tallow and had a very good practice match against Tallow. Kilmighty from County Kerry came up to us and played us in Castletown Roach, and we also played the Sars. So those three matches just in the recent past before Clannacilty kept us really ticking over. And just looking through the score, 319 to uh, 120, obviously a massive result, and Clannacilty would have fancied themselves um, going into that game. But obviously those games that you outline, especially with the North Cork final, they obviously stood to towards last week's uh, semi-final. Well, I thought we were improving immensely with every game that we played. Now, I know there were only challenge matches, but we have a few fellas that are bothering, but not just 15, we, we were up to 18, 19 and 20. And a very difficult job for the selectors to actually pick the team, even for Clannan Kilty last week. A few hard calls were made, and I know some boys were really disappointed, but they'll be looking forward to maybe getting their chance in the county final, even though I don't see much change from the team that played against Clannan Kilty last week. So what's the buzz been like since that semi-final win last Saturday, uh, Noel? What's the buzz around Glenwork like? Ah, uh, listen, come here. This, this this is the stuff of legends because Glenwork, as I said, uh, being a footballing stronghold, my God, to, to have holding. You know when you bring holding to a football club, uh, the price of holdings, holding balls, they don't know what hit them when this holding uh, machine started to take over. And we've had four or five lads at the top that are absolutely putting in no effort whatsoever to try and win the county final for Harbour Rovers. Like with the men, we, we had Noel O'Brien with us from the Catherines for the last few years. We brought in Frank Flannery. We had Kenneth Kennedy with us as well, um, looking after their heads. We had, we had a holding coach coming from Mill Street up to us, who was originally from Kana, a Clancy man, Pat Clancy, I think. And everything that could be done is being done for these holders. I, I I just I've seen nothing like it. I, I've been involved in coaching and underage all my life, and the work that the lads have put in behind the scenes to get us where we are 
is unreal. And we're so proud to be there and really looking forward to the challenge on Sunday. The buzz is immense. And it is a poignant week um, as well, Noel, because I know you saw yourselves, you lost your uh, club president in the past couple of days. Yeah, Owen McAuliffe. Oh, my God, what, what a man. Uh, when, when I came up here uh, to Glenmore first, I joined only in the, the coaching with, with the underage. And he reminded me very uh, so much of my old coach that I had in Tyler called Ned Power. Move the ball as quickly as you can. Give it to a better man. No cribbing, no pouting, no schnouting. Get on with the game. And that's what it's all about. And if you're beaten by a better team, you're beaten by a better team. Take your beating and get on with it and try and rise up for the next day again. And I think... That's the lad, that's the same, exactly the same mentality as all our lads have on the team. And they're a very, very tightly uh, knit bunch, and they really back each other up and are playing well. So all roads lead to Parky on Saturday for a, a massive game against the East Cork champions. Yeah, isn't it isn't it great that Parky Ring can make themselves available for us or Parky Cave when the need arises? Like Lee School are uh, nearly exactly the same a replica of ourselves. They're they're a uh, uh, we played junior B holding as they call it here, novice at one stage, most of our lives. We won two county finals in the recent past. I think they won two county finals as well, around the same time as we did. Um, I, I remember um, Lee School having estates being built because there was a, an influx coming from Cork City down to that side of the world. They'd be nearer to Cork than us. And I remember thinking to myself, they'll probably come good in time in, in holding and football. I would have considered them more a football in times past with uh, those O'Shea families coming in. And we played them in challenge matches over the years here. I think mainly in football. And they got their turn this year. The same as I said, we got our turn. But this is our turn, North Cork, this year. So I think it was their first. And this obviously is our first county final in Junior A. And it's an absolutely magnificent feat for the two villages, for both of us. And whichever one of us win on Sunday, my God, the pride in the village will be unreal. I, I don't know to keep us going till Christmas, I'd say. Well, Noel, we wish you the best of luck and uh, we look forward to throwing uh, at three o'clock. Patrick, absolutely delighted to talk to you. And uh, best wishes to both teams and I hope for a cracking game and that the harbour will come out on top. Tall ships flying into us on Sunday evening, Saturday evening. So I have Jerry Ryan, Liz Gould manager with me. And Jerry, thanks very much for joining us. Um, can I bring you back 11 months ago when you won your first East Cork uh, Junior Hurling title um, in Middleton when you defeated Carrick Navarro? What were the emotions on the day itself? Uh, Patrick, thanks for having me on. Uh, unreal uh, on the day, like you know, um, for the players especially, for the coaches. Richie and Trevor, for ourselves really, the whole parish. Um, look, I suppose the numbers were small there because crowds couldn't get in. But uh, it, definitely, it was a monkey off our backs for a long time, like we were trying to get to our semi-finals, quarter-finals over the years, but no joy. But on the day, the players came up trumps and we got over the line, like convincingly in the end, like, you know, but look, that's how it went. And we trained hard and um, I think it was just reward in the end, like, you know, so great day. It was a, a historic day indeed, and I suppose we revolve and move forward then to three weeks later when you played your first ever county quarter final against uh, Inniscarra, just so only getting over them by a single point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, we took that as well. Um, definitely, uh, Inniscarra were tough, like you know, more experienced than we were. Obviously, we were a very young panel, and some of the guys played at higher levels, but not as a team. But uh, they were formidable uh, opposition uh, in Escara. Big, strong men, like, and knew how to field the ball, like, you know. But on the day, we we, we took it. We, we played to our hearts content and hearts out. We, we tried everything and we just got through by a point, like, you know. So, so some days you get lucky on, on the day, like, more days, it just doesn't go for you, like. But on that day, you know, we just bit a lady look as well. We need that as well, like, you know. But great, great, great game. And just great to get on with it, like you know. And we're, we'll move on step by step. And that's where we said, like you know. So that's where we are at the moment now. And nearly ten months later, then you had that semi final last week against Drum Tariff, and I wasn't at the game myself. I was up the country, but following it um, on social media, I think you were nine or ten points up at one stage, and Drum Tariff brought it all the way back down to two points uh, late, close in the game. Yeah, correct. Um, I suppose since we left. 10 months back and it was drum tariff was always on the cars like you know and i suppose 
it took a long time to get the game off off the ground and uh they 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 went into it hot and heavy like ourselves as well like you know and probably their experience was telling the other times but yeah they went nine or ten points up i think even 11 or 12 at one stage but i suppose look we, how we looked at it is we kept playing we pulled we pulled it out the way we did against the scala and i suppose the clock was enough favor at the end of it with so with a big lead up coming but then again saying that there's probably two halves and we did our best in the first half second half in the third quarter halfway through it we did good business, but they they came back at us, which they, they should at that level. Like you know, I, we didn't expect anything less. Like they didn't go into this match either, just to be turned over like that. Like you know, so it was good. And at the end of the day, it's best to win by one or two points against a good team going forward into the final. Because if we went out by five or six points there, we might be you know unwise going to the final. Then like you know, we mightn't have been tested as good. Like you know, but that was a severe test. Like you know, for Carter, our own Carter with the players and the train they'd done as well. Like you know. And um, I think we're ready now for the final, like, you know, after that good, heavy session, like, you know. I know we could talk about your players, I suppose, uh, just a couple, you know, John Cronin, who's obviously been involved in Cork teams in many grades uh, and CIT. Kieran Cronin, of course, uh, Patchy, he's well known. Yeah. Um, definitely. Three, hurling manager, uh, Isaac Welch. But I suppose Liam O'Shea, a woman who was coming back from injury, uh, and my understanding is that he picked up a red card in that game late in the game last week and we'll be missing this Saturday. Yeah, that's that's true, yeah. Uh, we moved on the last couple of minutes. I think it was three or four minutes ago. The boys were coming within two points of us. They were, and they were going for goal. Like, it was a play we were wanting to use them anyway at some stage, but we were holding tough until we get maybe over the line. But look, we sprung them. And there was a bit of a, a tussle going on. And unfortunately, he got the red card and his fellow player got the yellow. So look, um these things happen in sport as suppose, and we'll have to we'll have to ride that storm now and get stuck down in, in for Saturday. Like we didn't use Lima in the whole game either against Runtav because he was injured, like you know. So we went into that game without him. So we'll have to go back into the next game without him as well, like you know. So that's that's where we're at at the moment with Patrick, like you know. Definitely solely yeah. What's the atmosphere, like? What's the the atmosphere, atmosphere like, like around Liz Gould and Lim Lara? Like, it's not the biggest parish ever. Obviously, it's big no. by, by acreage, but it's not biggest yeah. by population, no. Uh, undoubtedly. No. What's it like being over the last couple of days? Uh, very good. Uh, flags out here, obviously, anybody you've seen the road, you know, they'd honk at the horn or whatever the case may be. But, you know, as I said, bonding out everywhere. Great, great atmosphere, like, you know, and uh, hopefully we keep it going, like, you know, and the way it is at the moment, I think all the parishes are behind us and parishes around us as well, like, you know, which just look like, you know, it's our first journey into this. So we, we'll take it on, on the head and see how we go, how we go like, you know. And now uh, you're really just looking forward now to three o'clock to throw in the ball? Uh, half four with a win next Saturday would be great. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely, yeah, uh, three o'clock, that's where it'll come down to, like, you know. But I think the game against Drumtaff is just a replica of that. And we've learned a lot off that game. And I think if we do the same again in this game, like, uh, I don't know, um, the opposition, I think they're about the same strength-wise as Drum Tariff. So we'll be looking forward to it, like, you know, and uh, we give it our best shot. You know, the players will as well. They're up for the game. And th it's down to them at the end of the day when they get over the white line, like, you know, uh, and that's how we're going to look at it. My thanks to Jerry Ryan and earlier on we heard from Noel Sheehan, PRO of Harbour Rovers and uh, thanks lads for catching up with me during the week. An intriguing uh, game here in Park here in, indeed in this County General Hurling Championship final. A very novel pairing, both sides winning their respective championships of course, Avon, uh, Harbour Rovers winning the Avenue Championship only last, this past June of course, uh, when they were held to a, uh, a draw last October and they defeated Kilshanig in a replay uh, in 20th of June Kilshanig uh, or Haber Rovers 214 Kilshanig 14 points and as for Liz Gould they had to qualify winning the J James E. Callagher Cup in East Cork last September when defeating Carrick Navarre in the final they have defeated Inascara in the quarter final 17 points to 210 last October and then had to wait until last Saturday when defeating Drum Tariff 316 to 217 and of course last Saturday for Haber Rovers they got over Clannock Kilty 319 to 120. Let's have a look at both teams for this afternoon's feature event and starting out with Harbour Rovers, David O'Sullivan, the Vice Chair of Harbour Rovers will start out in goal 
Full back line of Hamber, uh, Bart O'Keefe, Brian Gallagher, and Philip Blackburn. Half back line of Jack Collin, Thomas Condon, who captains the side, one of three brothers playing on today's team. Uh, he'd be flanked alongside Sean Finn. Eric Donoghue and David Pine, the legendary David Pine in the middle of the field, of course, who was a former cock miner and a junior football star with the Rebels. John O'Sullivan, Peter Condon, and Porrick Hannon, the half forward line, and Emmett Sheehan. Uh, Shane O'Riordan and Stephen Condon, uh, who's already scored, ele- who scored 11 points last Saturday, is in the full forward line. As for Liz Gould, they go unchanged from the 15 who defeated uh, Drum Tariff last Saturday afternoon. Kieran Cronin uh, is in goal. Keen Healy, Cahill Cashman, and Quivano O'Shea, the full back line. Kieran Cashman, Cahill Hickey, and John Cronin, who captains the side of the half back line. Of course, John Cronin has been involved in many teams uh, throughout the year, down through the years, in, from the Rebels' point of view, both minor and junior as well well middle field Jason Hagerty and Keen Scannell half forward line of Jack Ryan Caelan O'Brien and Declan O'Brien of course two brothers from Donegal and the full forward line James O'Driscoll John Cashman and Mark Hagerty as we look out in front of us our referee this afternoon is Brendan Barry Murphy from the Ahabola Club he's going to be flanked uh, by Colin Vaughan of Mill Street and ja- John Ryan uh, of McCroom we don't have long to head before we've got the national anthem in around five minutes time and I welcome my co-commentator this afternoon Mark Landers who joins us this evening no changes both sides Mark so an interesting side for this 123rd edition of the Junior Hurling Championship um, Patrick this is absolutely massive and uh, you can even feel the buzz in the stadium already uh, between both clubs um, I know there might be only 500 people here but it feels like there's about three or 4,000 uh, no changes on the team which is fantastic as well uh, no injuries to report and like I suppose our team's going to county finals, there obviously is some few players that have niggles and tears and there'll be no doubt uh, the same with Cork tomorrow going in against Kilkenny. But it's great that uh, both teams are here. I suppose the most important thing is that the match is being played, there's a county final, there's a, there's a cup. I think the Johnny Quirk Memorial Cup is what it was called in my day in 1995 when we were lucky enough to beat uh, Ballon Hassig. And the memories of that day, Patrick, are still with me today. Um, our club it was the first county championship that we won at that time, and both teams today, uh, Harbour Rovers and Liz Gould, will be trying to win the county for the first time ever. And whoever comes out uh, today, and I presume it'll be finished today as well, we're going to extra time mm. and penalties, there will be a cup at home at the village tonight in one of the villages, and obviously we'd be advising to be practising social distancing and all that kind of stuff, but the bottom line is, you know, when there's a county championship at stake, um, not everybody from the club is here at the match today, but your team, win, lose or draw, or win or lose, I suppose, in this situation, will be back tonight and they will need support one way or the other. The one thing we heard from Jerry Ryan moments ago, uh, Lee Moshe getting a straight red last weekend, he is out today. Um, and my understanding was that they actually did go in a, through an appeals process over the past 48 hours, but failed to... Uh, get that result uh, overturned and a massive loss. Okay, he only came on the last 10 minutes last week in, in their semi final, but it's a major loss for, oh, for Liz Gould. It, it, it's, a, it's a major loss for Liz Gould, there's no doubt about Lee, Lee Moshe is one of the scoring forwards and would be highly talented, uh, a very good underage. Uh, uh, a very good underage career as well. But I suppose, Patrick, the, the reality here is that, you know, I, I know he came on late in the game, he was carrying an injury, but I think. You know, there might have been a bit of a scuffle with the cornerback and stuff like that. But any time you raise your hurling, I think the referee sent him off for striking or maybe over physical play and stuff like that. But any time that happens, that you raise your hurling, you run the risk then of getting a red card. And I suppose there was no higher situation than recently when Anne Galan, I suppose, you know, probably should have got a red card for a flick back. Even though a lot of people say he was being pulled and dragged and stuff like that. But if you, if you slap out with the Hurley, well, then you have every chance of getting a red card. And look, it's unfortunate, but I think the big thing for Liz Gould is that they were aware that Liam was going to be gone from the starting 15 and wasn't going to be available today. They've had a week to adjust and, and be aware of that. There's nothing worse than losing a player, maybe 24 hours, or even like you got to the, to the intermediate final last year with Castellines last column Spillane in the first minute of the game. I thought Castellan struggled on that occasion to overcome to overcome that injury. So they've had a week. They've had a week to to get over it and deal with it. And I'm sure that Liz Gould uh, will, will, will have no issue. Yeah, sure. A big game all coming up indeed. But firstly, we're going to pause for uh, a moment's silence because, uh, of course, last week Harbour Rovers lost their club president, Oni McAuliffe. Oni was one of the most decorated Glamworth GA players to ever play the game for the Avondale Club. And he was described by many footballers and hurlers uh, in Glamworth. 
to be a colourful player and wore the car colours with distinction during the 1950s. And we stand to attention to remember the great Oni McCall of club president of Harbour Rovers. A rapple of applause for Oni McAuliffe, club president of Harbour Rovers. Not long for the 123rd edition of the Junior Hurling Championship final right after Aron Avine. Mark, just to quickly touch on Harbour Rovers and I suppose the three brothers we need to talk about, the three Condon brothers, Peter Condon, age 19, centre forward, corner forward Stephen Condon and centre back their leader, their, their talisman, Thomas, Thomas Condon, Condon, 27 years of age. Yeah, fantastic family, fa fantastic occasion for the Condons. I suppose the, the, the most uh, noted player there is Stephen, he's a, a very, very strong underage, played minor and it was a very good under Dennis Ring and he's a significant player um, and I, I would say Liz Gould will be uh, young Healy more than likely will be will be tasked with picking him up today. Fist pumps given all round sergeants in uh, Brendan Barry Murphy to kick off this game. Big day for him as well from the Ahabolog Club because we'll see Ahabolog and Airog through in an intermediate A football hurling championship final later on this evening. But we're underway in this junior A hurling championship final. First possession did go the way of Harbour Rovers Pori Cannon. Was dispossessed. It was a flick away there from Peter Condon. And here's John Z. Cronin under pressure, high tackle on Cronin by David Pine, and an early free out won by the Liz Goal captain. Yeah, fantastic play, and uh, the referee is leaving the game. I said it's quite obvious already the referee is leaving it develop, which is what both teams will want. Just that people would be aware of there's a very strong breeze blowing into the Black Rock end of the field today. And it's Liz Gould who will be defending that Black Rock end in this opening half. There's a f tussle for the possession over on that far side. John Cashman now winning that. Outside the 20 metre line, popping the ball, back outside, out towards James O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll with the shot, looking for the opening score, and converts it, does the Liz Gould corner forward. Yeah, great start from James O'Driscoll from a tight angle. Under Early doors, and left it off, great start for Liz Gould. So the first time we'll see the vice chairman of Harbour Rovers, David O'Sullivan, in action. 24 years of age, sending this one long into Liz Gould territory. Big tussle over on that far side. David Pine failing to pick up possession. It was won by Jack Ryan, who plays along up the line. The Harbour Rovers are there in numbers. Jack Collin had been out. He's following back Sean Finn, playing it long into the corner, looking for Shane O'Reardon. O'Reardon scoring four points in last week's semi final against Clannacilty. Going in by the byline, faced up against by two Liz Goulmen. Emmett Sheehan with the snapshot around. That ball still hasn't gone out, it's still in play, and Kieran Cronin now, not the most athletic keeper we've ever seen, but did the very smart thing, just pulling on the ball. And Cahill Hickey now trying to break out possession, and Hickey's been pinned for overcarrying the ball. Great pressure inside there by the Harbour Rovers, caught a wing forward, Paul Cannon. 
Great, great play by Peter Hannon. There was a race for possession uh, where his goalkeeper made it, flicked it out to his centre back who had won the game, probably rode the tackle, probably would have felt that he would have been okay. But a uh, great play by Parik Hannon to slow him up and force him into the turnover and has given Haber Rovers the opportunity to equalise here. So just coming up to two and a half minutes on the clock and a chance for the village from Glamworth Harbour Rovers to convert that and they have done so through Stephen Condon who scored 11 points last week yeah fantastic and not an, e- not an easy free either out here on the right hand side under the stand side uh, great for his confidence to get the first one over the bar and we also note that he's been picked up by Cahill Hickey who is doing a man to man job on the Harbour Rovers talisman Stephen Condon Poor puck from Kieran Cronin, but in fairness to Kieran Cashman, dealt with it very well. Cashman's ended up on the floor. Uh, referee happy enough to leave play, continue on, and there's a real tussle for possession over there. Cashman got it back up in his feet, and he's dealt with it, sending it long, but that strong breeze just holding the ball in the air. And it's a chance now for Harbour Rovers to come on the counter-attack. Jack Collin. Long ball into the, the full forward line, but you can see how strong that breeze, Mark, yeah. carried it all the way away. And it was significant. We saw both sides there with a the wing back for Liz Gould. Barely got it past the 45, and the clearance from uh, Jack Collin went out wide. Quick puck out from Kieran Cronin out towards Jack Ryan. And the same blue a goal are standing to the right of us because they've retaken the lead through their wing forward, Jack Ryan. And that's a very, very good score. And in, a score from play, Patrick, as well. So that's two scores from Liz Gould from play from Jack Ryan and uh, James O'Driscoll early doors uh, responded by a point from a free from Stephen Condon. Good, lively start to this junior hurling championship final of 2020. David O'Sullivan with the puck out over towards that far side. But again, Liz Gould winning the breaking ball. Declan O'Brien, one of the Donegal brothers, kill on the other. That ball has gone out over the sideline in that far side and it's uh, signalled by our sideline official, John Ryan, to be a Liz Gould sideline ball. Tactics early here, Mark, are going to be crucial, especially in that against the breeze uh, for Liz Gould or with the breeze from Haber Rovers, whichever side yeah, of the bank you're on. At, at the moment, um, um, Haber Rovers are just playing with a one man up front. Uh, that is their full forward, in uh, Seamus O'Riordan, at the moment. And Liz Gould are playing with a two man inside, James O'Driscoll and Young Cashman. Good sideline ball, but all the way down to Brian Gallagher. Gallagher being. Harry and Hassel, they're a good physical side, good unit so far, Harbour Rovers. Played long into the corner, but this time Keane Healy winning possession. Here's Liz Gould captain John Cronin doing a 1-2 back with Healy, and Healy goes up the line. Looking for the corner forward, James O'Driscoll, but he was played off it, and cleared out there by Bart O'Keefe. Long ball into the full forward line, that one-man full forward line breaks down as a chance for Glanworth to try and level up this game and they have done that successfully and again this time from play Stephen Condon yeah and, and, and great play by the full forward uh, Seamus O'Riordan or Shane O'Riordan who knocked the ball down to the onrushing Stephen Cronin and a good snappy point straight over the bar long ball played down by John Cashman quickly run onto by Jason Hagerty and Hagerty gets himself on the score sheet Liz Gould retaking yeah, the lead a, a great response from Liz Gould and again you have to say the significance of three points in play automatically the Liz Gould forwards a very very sharp Patrick early doors so we restart the play with nearly six minutes gone in the opening half of this county junior hurling championship final Pucko from David O'Sullivan down to the low ranger here is John Cronin and he's been hurried and hassled, but Brendan Barry Murphy has been very consistent on the overcarrying he here. He is, Patrick, and, and you'd have to say, you know, John Cronin did very well to win the ball out of the air. He lost his hurley, and sometimes referees will give you give a free against you for leaving, you leaving early. He rode a tackle, and probably his consistency is the big thing that you mentioned there. He has brought Liz Gould already for overcarrying. Uh, the last time it was Kahaliki, this time it's John Cronin. He possibly would have been better off to offload it. So a chance for Stephen Condon from outside the 45 metre line with the aid of a very strong breeze playing into the Black Rock end in this opening half and he converts us. So that's Stephen Condon three points, Harbour Rovers with three points to his goals tree, level game once again. Yeah, and, and, and there's a very, very significant strong breeze blowing down the field in, in, on, uh, in favour of Harbour Rovers in the first half. Puck out from Kieran Cronin over towards that far side. John Cashman wasn't the quickest to it. Play on, says the referee. John, John Cronin with a great pickup there. Pops the ball over the top, but he was being held up there illegally, says Brendan Barry Murphy. And it's going to be a free in for Liz Gould. 
arms around the body and an illegal tackle. Yeah, and uh, you know, great response from John as well, having given away the free the last time. He's won a free for his team today. Uh, he's also, um, I suppose, a three-time winning county champion, senior championship with McKilly. I think he has the only distinction, Patrick, of being the only player who played in every championship match with McKilly. So he brings a huge amount of experience to the Lisgool team today. Uh, he's been one of their stalwarts for many, many years, gone through the underage ranks, gone through CIT, and then I suppose, you know, like any junior or maybe intermediate player in the East Cork division has the option of playing with McKilly at senior level. And he's one of those players who has thrived on, 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 on getting that exposure at senior level. And I think one of the sidelines, I suppose, Mark, today that his brother Kieran Crone and is the manager of that in McKilly team. So Kieran, not just defending the goal, but he'll be having an eye on that uh, captain of Lisgool, the head of the uh, you, senior I, championship in a couple you, of weeks. Are you telling me he's safe enough to be on the team for the coming championship because his brother is involved? Yeah, I mean, look, in fairness, you'd have to say Kieran has been involved with Fergal Condon and, and the, the, the backrooms team for in McKilly for a good few years and when Fergal stepped aside to get involved with Pat Ryan at under 20 level well one of the guys it was great to see one of the, the selectors there step up to the plate uh, but not an easy job Patrick to have somebody involved from your family as you, you can see with Shane Kingston and Kieran Kingston this weekend I uh, don't know how the breakfast went this morning after Shane finding out that he wasn't starting um, on Sunday but look that's one of the difficult things when, uh, when you have a father and a son combination on, on a selection committee we might touch on that a little bit later on but the resulting free scored by John Cashman who scored nine points in their semi-final win over Drum Tariff last weekend so nearly nine minutes gone on the clock puck off from David O'Sullivan but that's just gone too far right him, uh, over the sideline marshalled there by Colin Vaughan from Kilnamatra so it's going to be a sideline to be taken by Cahill Hickey just outside the 45 just being shown by our sideline official where's the most correct point to be taken from Good, decent crowd, a good atmosphere in the early stages of this County Junior Hurling Championship final. Live on the Irish Examiner live streaming service. Long ball, touched down by John Cashman. And that's going to be a yep. Glamworth Harbour Rovers ball. And a good good call by the good call by the linesman there as well. John Cashman did put up his hand, or sorry, put up his hurley and knocked it out of play. So a chance now for their captain, Thomas Condon, to resume play. Down the line and Good ball down towards Shane O'Reardon, but John Cronin was first to it on his knees, pick up possession. And Cronin breaking out of the fence, looking to try and switch the play. Got held up in the wind gradually. Jason Hagerty under pressure from a very experienced David Point. A winning possession, John O'Sullivan over on that far side of the field. On the Bury Manor road side of the ground. Short ball to Stephen Condon with the wind and he's back, sending this oh, ball in. That's a super score. Magnificent, absolutely magnificent score from Cronin. Fantastic. Went out, collected the ball, first touch. One half a turn and over the, over the bar. Best score of the game so far. Stephen Condon with two frees and two points and play to his name. Level game for the fourth time inside the opening 10 minutes. Puck out over that far side. There's a scrap for possession. John Cashman now has one possession. Shortens the grip. A great hook inside there from Sean Finn. Cashman still there trying to pick it up, but Finn there trying to pick up the crumbs and does so. And plays it back to the full back Brian Gallagher. 38 years of age playing in his first county junior hurling championship final. Here's Carl Hickey now. Short pass to John Cronin. There's an advantage coming the way of Liz Gould if it's not suiting, but a great pick up here from Jack Ryan. Looking for his second score of the game, but puts it left and wide. Oh, they're not sure. They're going for a post. Oh, dear. Oh, we dear. need Hawkeye. Hawkeye for that one, Patrick. Um, from our vantage point, it, it, it looked slightly that it might have went outside the post, to be honest. And now he has a turnover ball from a short puck out. James O'Driscoll winning possession, chance to go of a shot, goal! Oh, oh Matt Kagan, he in the back of the net! And now, all of a sudden, side 30 seconds from being a level game, it's now Liz Gould clear by four. And all of a sudden, Patrick, the, the game has turned on his head. Uh, the Harbour Rovers team will look at the fact that they felt that the, the ball had gone wide from the point and might have taken their eye off the ball and were looking at the referee. While the keeper took a short puck out, it was overturned in the Liz Gould full forward line. And Hagerty has pushed a big score in this game. 
Well, what can Harbour Rovers, what's their character going to be like over the next five minutes as we head towards the water break? Paul Cannon with possession in the centre of the field, finding Davy Pine over on that far side of the field, the experienced man, former cock minor, great block, but there was a pull on the jersey of Pine, and it's going to be a free in. That's a costly error there from the Harbour Rovers defence, coffee up a goal like that. It, it was, and it was a goal that has come against the run of play, but you'd have to credit Mark Hegarty for being sharp for watching the keeper. He intercepted the ball and struck the ball a fantastic score into the top left hand corner it, it could have a big deciding factor before the game is over but look there's still 45 minutes left in this game plenty of opportunities for Harbour Rovers to get back into the game in a game of hurling I heard Brian Carroll saying last week when Waterford were 10 points up against Galway that it was a it was a dangerous lead in hurling so anything can happen in hurling but it's, it's, it takes a bit of luck sometimes to win county finals and certainly Liz Gould have got the rub of the green on this occasion Mark Hagerty scoring a goal against Drum Tariff in their 316 to 217 victory at last week. He scored a very, very important goal in the 12th minute of this game, but that may have come back on the back of the uh, a very conscientious decision, which we might have to look at a little bit later on at halftime. It was Jack Collin who was receiving some attention. So it's a chance now for Stephen Condon to tack on a further score here to make it his fifth point of the game and a fifth point for Harbour Rovers after 13 minutes playing with the breeze in this opening half and Condon converts it. He's very clinical on those dead ball plays. Three points on freeze and two points in play. Five points for Harbour Rovers. Yeah, and he, he is standing up to the plate, Patrick, but I suppose the, the other forwards in the Harbour Rover team have got to start getting on ball and getting a few more scores for the team. You can see that puck up from Kieran Cronin hanging in the air and John Cashman now smells blood. There was a great hook in there on the full forward. Pops the ball. Outside, out towards Declan O'Brien and the man who transferred from Donegal down to Liz Gould only a matter of years ago has got himself on the score sheet in this county junior A final. Yes, and that's the second ball that John Cashman has won possession himself and has popped it in an unselfish manner out to a player in a better position and has resulted in a point for his team. And man under pressure there, Jack Collin, under pressure from James O'Driscoll who intercepted that ball to set up Hagerty for the goal. A chance now for John O'Sullivan. Looking to try and play the ball down the line, but a good tackle there from Kieran Cashman. Heavy hit there by the goal scorer, Mark Hagerty, who's all the way back inside his own half back line. The Harbour Rovers have turned this over once again. Here's the, the danger man, Stevie Condon, one of three brothers in the team. Great block inside there, though, by the Liz Gould defence, and a chance to clear their lines. Jack Ryan now. Short ball over the top to Cahill Hickey, who shortens the grip of the hurley. There's a big tussle inside in the corner forward position. Both guys are. Harry and Hassel inside here, and the referee says there's a pull of the hurley there by Bart O'Keefe. It's a free for his Gould inside of 45. And great play again by James O'Driscoll. The ball was into the corner. He hooked and harried, and he was pressured, but he still held onto the ball. He's overturned the, 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 the Harbour Rovers cornerback. Uh, Bart was just a bit over physical on that occasion, and the referee's awarded a free into his Gould. So a chance for John Cashman for the second time in this game to. Get a score from Freeze. On the right hand side over in that corner. It goes all the way over the net. It's gone over the bar between the posts. 15 minutes gone on the clock. And it's Liz Gould 1 7. Harbour Rovers 5 points. We're going to play on for another phase of play. Yeah, it's a big lead, Patrick, particularly with the breeze that, that Liz Gould are playing into the breeze in the first half. And it's a great start for them. Puck out down towards this near sideline. Great atmosphere here in Park Arena as the referee is going to stop play. He's going to throw in the ball. Our man from Ahabulog this afternoon, Brendan Barry Murphy. Great pick up there from David Point. Pull of the hand inside there by Jack Ryan, and it's going to be a free in for Harbour Rovers. Yeah, and, and, and I and I I suppose I hate keep mentioning the breeze, but there is a significant breeze here today. Uh, it's very it's going to be very difficult for free takers as the course of the match goes on, uh, because it seems as though the breeze may be picking up. Uh, this is a tough free again here now um, for Stephen Condon, nearly out in the 65 yard line, and uh, it's a tough free. And 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 Harbour Rovers just need to stay in this game. They need to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Um, because that goal will, will probably stay b between them unless they get a goal themselves. So a chance for Stephen Condon to try and get a further score. Beautifully struck from the Harbour Rovers corner forward and that's Condon's sixth point. 
Les Gould lead at the opening water break, 1-7 to six points, Mark. But I think the crucial point in the juncture here is that minute where the ball seemed to have gone to the left-hand side and wide, and from the resulting puck out, it poached by James O'Driscoll yeah. and buried from 20 yards up by Mark Hegarty. Absolutely. And, and like you'd have to say, um, like the score is 1-7 to six points. There's a goal and a point between the two teams at this stage. And they are the two big scores, I suppose, that, that Harbour Rovers will point to at this moment in time that they could be six points all. From our vantage point here, it seemed as though the slitter was tailing outside the post. And I don't want to wrong the umpires or the, or the officials because the officials are having a good game so far. And we complimented early doors. There was a difficult line ball that they got right. So, you know, it is very difficult to, uh, to criticise anybody in this situation. But from where we were, it looked as though the ball was drifting out. But again, you know probably Harbour Rovers should have dealt with it and said look okay there's nothing we can do about that let's get the ball down the field and in those situations you don't go short then and unfortunately uh, the keeper David O'Sullivan who went short ball was intercepted and then to double the problem the, uh, the Liz Gould player Mark Hegarty sticks the ball into the back of the net and that is really I suppose the only thing that is separating the two teams in the, in the first quarter of this game is that goal and a point but look Harbour Rovers are well in this game and um, but there is an over-reliance, I would say, on Stephen Condon up front. They need more from their forwards uh, if they're going to have a, a major say in this game before it's over. And Stephen Condon's having a blinding game in the opening 16 and a half minutes here, Mark, as well. Oh, super. Absolutely super. But the, the game is being played at a very good pace. The standard is quite good. And the referee is also compl- is, is, is contributing to that. And the field is in fantastic shape as well. The only thing that's, that is slightly difficult is that there's a swelling breeze, a significant breeze here today. So we resume the second quarter with the puck out from Kieran Cronin into the centre of the park. The Haber Rovers have been first to it once again. Pori Cannon with possession under pressure. Has to play it back to the full-back Brian Gallagher. Half blocked down but picked up by Barty O'Keefe and... Picked out by Hannon, switching the play to the top of the left. Here's Shane O'Reardon. Gets a clean possession on this occasion. Great block over there, though, by Kyle Cashman. The force is out for a sideline ball. Yeah, and, and great play by Shane O'Reardon on the way out. Got a great touch on the ball into the hand, but a fantastic block by Kyle Cashman to knock it out for a line ball. So a chance now for Stephen Condon. He's already got two points on play, four points from freeze in this game can he tack on a sideline ball well he did score a 65 last weekend so he would have the full complement in this county championship if he does convert this sideline got a great cut to it but it's going across the face of goal to the right hand side and wide it was it was a good effort the other significant thing for people that are watching it from today is that Harbour Rovers have now gone with a sweeper uh, they have a free man on the edge of the D and Liz Gould obviously have a free man as well at the other side Pucko from Kieran Cronin down to this near touchline, missed by the fullback Brian Gallagher. That's allowed Kaelan O'Brien to get in on the act. There's a shot to John Cashman. Lengthens the strength of the hurley. It's going to be drifting though and drifting for Liz Gould's first wide of the game. Yeah, and I don't know which one of the teams Patrick has reverted to the to the sweeper. Um, I I would suspect possibly it is probably Liz Gould because they're in a good position, being four points up. Um, they might they may feel that their forwards need a little bit more space, and they might have a bit of toe. Puck off from O'Sullivan over towards that far side. Once again, there's a chance for Jack Ryan to pick up possession. He does that. He's under pressure there from Eric O'Donoghue. Advantage not coming for a high tackle by O'Donoghue and it's going to be a free for Liz Gould back in, outside around 45 and it happened now over in front of the Liz Gould mentors I think there's a good few, a few of them with their hands in the air hoping for a free and they've got the free but again it's probably um, bearing to bring out Kieran Cronin that's a long free into the, into the teeth of a very strong breeze here today as we look over towards that far side Eric O'Donoghue now is just a man who is looking to receive some medical attention from the medics and a chance for well, in fact Haber Rovers are going to warm up a player here they are warming so up yeah they are warming up they are, they are concerned I would say there is a slight concern uh, that this player may well, he'll be given every opportunity by the physio I'm sure and uh, the referee has done the right job in giving him the opportunity to um, receive the treatment that he requires 
And we've seen that in a lot of games, Patrick, as well, where some referees don't, and I think maybe it's, it's part of the rules. Or what the, you know, they, they want to play to continue. They don't want teams slowing down the game or maybe in some some situations uh, feigning injury and stuff like that. So in this situation, the, the, and he's heavily strapped as well, so he was injured coming into the game. And we spoke about that, yeah. It doesn't look like he's going to be continuing either, so that's a blow for Harbour Rovers uh, that they're going to lose a player. Uh, I think it's uh, Eric O'Donoghue in the middle of the field that they're going to be losing. So he, he'll be a loss, Patrick. Sure will. Secretary of Harbour of, uh, Rovers, Kieran Murphy, has just handed a slip to Colin Vaughan as we see the introduction in front of us over here to our left-hand side, just trying to gather the number. And it is number 22, Conor, Conor. Denny, who's going to be coming in instead of Eric O'Donoghue in a shame. In the early stages of a junior final to be yeah, well, like, you know, there's a couple of there's a couple of blows there now that, that Harbour Rovers have had to deal with. I suppose the, the goal is one, and we will leave it probably at that now to, to discuss the goalie morning, discuss the rest of the game. But to lose a player from the middle of the field is a big loss as well. Just free taking short to John Cashman pops up back outside to Carl Hickey. Look at the try and fade it back inside. But goes to the right and wide, and you, from where we were marked, the trajectory of that ball landed in short. Not the greatest of touches there on that occasion by Thomas Condon, but he's dealt with it very well indeed. Played on to Brian Gallagher. And a chance now for Haber Rovers to try and clear the lines. Here's Sean Finn. Short stick work. The run was continued there by Parry Cannon, but just <coughs> the touch failed on him on that occasion. Yeah, but it's obviously a tactic now when you see this because I think Patrick it took six passes from the goalkeeper right through the lines. They get the ball out here to the midfielder, uh, to David Point. Unfortunately, miscontrolled it and knocked it out over the sideline. But that's high risk stakes in a, in, a, in a county final where one puck from the keeper would have probably have landed the ball in the same position. Carl Hickey with a, a scuffed line ball, landing into the centre of the field, and there's a, a tussle for possession and a rook, which Brendan Barry is going, Brendan Barry Murphy is going to stop playing. He's going to throw in the ball. And the referee is after touching. It's after touching him, so he's going to take another chance of an opportunity. And he's just telling both players to stand square as they are. And he throws it in, and escaping there on that occasion was John O'Sullivan evading two, three, four tacklers, popping the ball off inside for Peter Condon, and one Condon brother scores, and he can put that down to the second brother, Peter Condon, 19 years of age. Yeah, that was an excellent score from Peter Condon, and it's a big score in the context of the game, because Haber Rover, after losing their midfielder, Eric O'Donoghue, need to respond to get back into this game. There's only a goal in it, but you'd have to say that that goal, controversial and all as it was, is between the two teams. You now have a bit of a scuffle off the ball in the Blackrock end. Um, the Liz Gould corner back, I think, is down. Keen Healy, it is. Keen Healy is down. He's holding and the umpires it. have seen something and they're looking to try and get the umpires to come together because Brendan Barry Murphy is after making a 60 run, yard run down the field to yeah. speak to our umpire something has happened off the ball which wasn't clear to us but the umpires would have the best view because the umpires would have been looking straight up the field at the sideline yeah interesting to see now yeah. what Brendan Barry Murphy a sergeant in Angus Garn Station we'll see where he is heading for and the hand is in the pocket. So obviously, there is going to be trouble here. I think Keen Patrick, Healy. the fact that he's waiting for the Liz Gould player to get up, there's a possibility that, that, that potentially there may be two yellow cards. And I don't want to, um, I suppose, prejudge the situation, but the umpires obviously saw something. They have spoken to the referee. The question is, there's definitely going to be a card pull. It's a yellow for Stephen, Stephen Condon, Condon anyway, and I have a feeling there might be a second yellow coming yeah. again here now. For, yeah, for Keane Healy, it looks like two yellows going to be awarded by the umpire, or by the referee. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. the, the advice of the umpires. On the advice. And look, you don't want to see any player uh, being sent off in a county final, um, but I mean, we're 24 minutes into the game now. Um, you don't want to see any of that kind of messing going on for the rest of the game. A sideline ball was short. Jack Ryan said there was a, a referee said there was a shoulder straight frontal charge on Jack Ryan. So that's going to be a free for Liz Gould 
again against the wind for John Cashman over in that corner beside the 65 metre flag mark it's going to be a tough a free play free. against the free yeah, it's a difficult free Patrick um, I suppose he does have the trees behind on the uh, city side of the so maybe the breeze may not be as significant but there's only one way to strike this you have to give it full power trust yourself back yourself pick it and strike it through he's done that but is it going all the way? It's got. The, it's going to hang in the air in towards the edge of the square. And the referee is going to call out for a square ball yeah. because Mark Hagerty came into the square before the ball arrived. So it's going to be a free out for the Well, that tell you the significance of the breeze this year today because John Cashman is a fantastic striker of the ball. He was about 55 yards out, just inside the 65-yard line, and the wind held it up, and it didn't go wide at all. Puck out from a free from David O'Sullivan on that occasion. Played short, back to the wing, back here is Jack Collin. And the touch just not working out for Harbour Rovers with a couple of the players. Here is Conor Dennehy, the first half substitute only moments ago. As Liz Gould are flooding players forward, trying to apply some pressure. Cleared out here though by Brian Gallagher. And a chance now for Emmett Sheehan to try and get in on the act. But just a touch from Sheehan, not the greatest. And a chance for Liz Gould captain to John Clon to set up another attack. Great blocking there though on... Keane Healy and it was touched on the ground by Davy Pine it's going to be another chance for Liz Gould from the centre of the field again a little just a little bit unlucky that just a small little things are going against Harbour Rovers that was very very unlucky there just touched the but it was good refereeing at the same time he did touch it he did touch it in the line or on the ground so John Cashman right on the centre of the field about 10 yards to the left hand side of the goal one would think he's going to go for another long strike again again gives it full well, well in short popped out underneath the keeper's crossbar and James O'Driscoll in there has actually picked up the possession off the floor clean yeah, out and again good refereeing by Brendan Barry Murphy to pick the spot that he picked it off the ground and again the breeze held up the free it just looked like it was going to drop over the post but held it the last second and knocked back into play free from Thomas Condon over towards that far side to Conor Denny great block over there though by Kieran Cashman but a chance for Harbour Rovers to try and clear their lines once again. Cashman applying pressure inside there. Here is Sean Finn from the wing-back position over towards Conor Dennehy, who gets a second bite of the cherry and clears his lines. But straight down to the Liz Gould captain, John Cronin. Switch the play to this near side to Cahill Cashman. Shortens the stick. <laughs> Plays it down in front of us. Harbour Rovers have numbers back there. And back there is Philip Sheehan. Sheehan pops the ball back to Jack Carlin. There was a late tackle on there on Colin. Play continues on. John Cashman now with possession as the referee stops play. And, and the, ump the umpire has his hand. The umpire on the left-hand side of the post definitely has his hand out. Uh, the ball was being cleared and he got a heavy tackle. I think it was with his body rather than his holly. Um, but the umpire was very, very quick, Patrick, to put up his hand. Um... So the number 12, Declan, I think is Declan O'Brien possibly could be spoken to here by the referee. Again, there may be a card. The question is, well, what colour? Oh, he's, the referee's checking on the player first to see, is he OK? He's coming to Declan. Um, yeah, so is Declan O'Brien is the man being spoken to here. One of the two Donegal brothers have relations down in Liz Gould. And it is Declan O'Brien who is being spoken to here as Harbour Rovers get another substitute ready and a yellow yeah. card being brandished to Declan O'Brien, Mark. Yeah, and look, Patrick, I, I would I would say I think it was more his body. You know, sometimes the supporters will react to say, ah, oh, it was something more than that. But look, in fairness to the Harbour Rovers player, he's got attention there from the physio. Now he's up. I don't think there's anything, there was anything malicious in it. And I think the referee has made a, the correct decision. A yellow card. And, and Declan O'Brien and the other two lads that have got yellow cards already, they're walking a tight rope now for the rest of the game. Any more infractions, and a referee gives them a second yellow, they're going to be gone. So look, they've got their warning now, and they should heed that and, and, and get on with the game now. So a free here from Stephen Condon. And is he going to put this over the bar? It looked like Harbour Rovers had possession. They've got yeah. the free and they've got the score. Yeah, never in doubt, really, Patrick. I think I think the way he's striking frees at this moment in time, anything from 80 yards in with that breeze is a point. And um, but like I suppose it's significant that Harbour Rovers, I think, have eight points at this stage. Seven of them have been scored by Stephen Condon and one by his brother Peter. And there's another change coming now on, on the Harbour Rovers team. 
Yeah, Stephen, Stephen Dunn making his way off the field, uh, making his way onto the field. Corner forward, number 13, Emmett Sheehan is the man who is making his way off. So Stephen Dunn going straight in towards the full forward line. John Cronin picking him up. As we look around for the fourth official, which we actually don't have a fourth official this evening, but we're waiting for the added time to be awarded. There'll definitely be a possibility of two minutes coming our way in this opening half as the puck out from Kieran Cronin, picked up on this occasion by Harbour Rovers. Peter Condon under pressure there, plays the ball short, and it's knocked out by... Harbour Rovers man and it's going to be a Liz Gould line ball John Cronin is the man who's going to be taking this one yeah and the exchanges are still very physical uh, which you'd expect in any county final uh, but the, the match has been played in a great spirit and the referee is handling the game fierce well but I suppose he doesn't want to be uh, dealing with any more yellow cards Patrick John Cronin with a beautiful sideline ball all the way in towards the parallelogram getting back there was Thomas Condon like the speed of lightning, but not the greatest of clearances by Condon. And that's a charging well, that's call definitely there by a free out, and, uh, and that's a free out. And uh, I think the Lions test is going to be on at 5 o'clock today, Patrick. And that was a, a frontal charge there by Quaylam O'Brien. And there was no doubt that it was going to have to be a free out. Is that seven minutes of additional time being awarded? Well, plenty of time to go here as that ball goes to the right-hand side and wide from John O'Sullivan. Seven minutes of additional time here, Mark. It's a long time, Patrick. Um, but I certainly would have expected four or five minutes, but seven is a long. But look, you know, when you're waiting all year, and you, that both these teams have been waiting a long time to play a county final, another seven minutes is going to kill them. Well, we've got more entertainment value before the closure of this first half of this Cork Junior A Hurling Championship final. There's another rock and sues over on that far side. And Brendan Barry Murphy... Pulls a stoppage to play well, on the, the funny Boreen Manor roadside yeah. of the ground as John Ryan just signalling to where the spot of the clash ball shall be. And referee dish out instructions to John Cashman and David Pine on how to pull on the ball. Well, he's giving good advice there, certainly, but I wouldn't be getting involved with it if I was the Ahabolog man for this game. He might get involved with it later on, though. As possession is over on that far side, play continues on, a real scrap for possession over there. The Hamber Rovers man there, Jerome, or Stephen Dunn, I should say, is the man who has gained possession. There's hands up in the airs, Harry Hassel, John Cronin, high tackle on Cronin there, a frontal charge, and it's going to be free off for this Gould. Yeah, but Patrick, you'd have to say that Hamber Rovers are bang back in this game now. It's 1 7 to 8 points. And there was a stage, Patrick, where there was four or five points between the teams. Since the water break, uh, since we went into the second quarter, Harbour Rovers have had the better of it. But the other significant thing is that I don't know which one of the teams reverted to the spare man, but Liz Gould have failed to score, I think, in, um, I'd say since the first, the first quarter, 16th minute. So that, that, is, that is significant. And that was at the end of the first quarter, but they're looking to try and get a score at the end of the second quarter. This ball going across the face of goal to the left-hand side and wide. You're right, Mark. It's the end of the 16th minute when John Cashman got that free to level up, to yeah, uh, get that, that margin yeah, back that's, down. That's, that's 16 minutes, Patrick, without a score. And they had, you know, they had one seven scored in the first 16 minutes of the game and nothing since. So that is something that they'll have to look at, Patrick. Kieran Cashman playing possession out to... Cahal Hickey, long ball from the Liz Gould centre-back. Lovely touch there by Parik Hannon, but just couldn't get possession into his hand. And there also is Philip Blackburn. Under pressure there is a push to the back on Jack Hall and an easy free given away there by the goal scorer this afternoon, Mark Hagerty. Yeah, and, and like it is, it's, it is significant. John Cashman is playing out the field, probably playing in a centre-forward or a second centre-forward role. And he's a big threat that has been taken away from the Liz Gould forward line. Beautifully played there by the Harbour Rovers men. Played it down to Stevie Condon, turning inside. And inside of that post goes over the bar. And with, what, a little over three minutes left, the margin is down to a solid three points. Down, down to a point, and it is all Harbour Rovers at this moment in time. Uh, a freeze um, out of the Liz Gould forward line. Significant amount of freeze being conceded up there. And the ball just isn't sticking up there. Here is Declan O'Brien over on that far side, walking his way inside the 65 metre line, being measured there by David Pine. As the play's been balled out, uh, Liz Goodman has been pinned for playing the hurley 
early before the ball came. And, or even, I think, possibly Declan O'Brien, I think, threw, threw the ball, Patrick, as well. I think the referee has hinted at, at putting his hand up that way. But it is significant that Liz Gould, the Liz Gould forward line have gone totally out of the game from what we saw in the first quarter of an hour. And I think part of that has been the fact it is probably Liz Gould has reverted to seven defenders, maybe trying to defend the lead, I suppose, Patrick. They were one seven to six points up and probably uh, had, had decided to defend it and get to half time maybe on level scores and, and hopefully they will win to bring him home in the second half. Oh my God, this is a massive puck from right. Stephen Condon from his own 45 all the way over the bar and from what being five points down at one stage, Harbour Rovers are back level in injury time. Yeah, and I mentioned Patrick there a while ago that I felt that the way he was striking the ball, that anything from 80 yards was a possibility, but I didn't expect something from 100 yards. Fantastic score from Condon. We're in for a real cracker the way this is shaping up in this Junior Hurling Championship final, and Carl Hickey playing a ball straight down on top of the Harbour Rovers centre back, and the purple patch very much with the men, the champions from Avendu, although, as the commentators, of course, would say, that ball's been touched out. Well, the commentator's course was going to say that Liz Gould were going to win possession, but on this occasion, they've got the break, the break of the hurley, the break of the ball. That ball was knocked out by Conor Dennehy in a chance for Kieran Cashman from a sideline over that far side, similar to the position of Stephen Condon's three moments ago. Worked down to the centre to Claylon O'Brien, but it's again Harbour Rovers who are in, in this middle of a purple patch doing things well, albeit not the cleanest bit of hurling, but they're fighting very hard, being very physical in attack, and once again, another rock over on that far side of the field, Jack Ryan it is, who has gained possession, popping it off to John Cashman, and again, for riding the tackle mark, and in fairness to a Rahapunuk uh, official, he's been very, very consistent. Very, very consistent, and again, I've spoken earlier on about the fact that you need little breaks and stuff like that, you know, the Harbour Rovers defence just gave him a slight touch out over the line ball, the, the danger has been averted, a good cut now and get the ball back down into their own forward line and a possibility of taking the lead before half time, which would have to say, Patrick, at the first water break, didn't look likely. Sure didn't indeed. 1 7 to, uh, is one seven to 6 points it was at that water break. As Brendan Barry Murphy says, you know what, lads, thanks very much. I'm going for an early cup of tea. There were seven minutes of water. He didn't play the seven, but he didn't have to. Because we get such great entertainment value after the opening half of this Cork County Junior A Hurling Championship final. It is Harbour Rovers, 10 points. Liz Gould won seven, a draw game here after a great enthralling 37 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's massive. It's massive. It's fantastic. And um, I, I mentioned earlier on, you know, about the endeavours of both teams. has been fantastic. And I'd also like to compliment both sets of uh, supporters here. You'd have to say that the Harbour Rovers supporters are very vocal. Maybe it's the fact that we are very close to them here. Are we surrounded both left and right? But they are letting their players know that they are 100% behind their team. Um, but I'd have to say the first, the first 15 minutes of the game was owned by Liz Gould. They hurled very well, looked very competent. Uh, every time the ball came into the forward line, they looked like scoring. And they also have a spread of scores across three or four players. The second quarter of the game has been owned by Harbour Rovers. Uh, part of that has been the fact that they seem to have an extra defender. They're playing with six. Liz Gould seem to have reduced a forward out to play and have given and are only playing with five forwards up front. Uh, they have reverted to a sweeper down the back. And I'd also say that the um, bringing on a Stephen Dunn uh, for Emmett Sheehan, he has gone straight in on the Liz Gould talisman, John Cronin, and I think he's having an effect as well. Uh, John Cronin was having a big influence on the game, and he has slightly gone out of the game, I would say, in the last 10 minutes since that substitution was made. So, you know, from, from uh, I suppose, a, a first quarter situation where Harbour Rovers were four points down, they find themselves back level and every, every chance of winning this county final, but again, Liz Gould will be turning to play with whatever bit of a breeze is there. And it is significant. It is probably a three or four point breeze, I would have to say, Patrick. OK, let's have a look at the main talking points of this first half, Mark. And here we're going to see the goal from uh, James O'Driscoll, who intercepted that ball and a rasping shot from Mark Hagerty. Yeah, it was a fantastic goal. And again, it, you know, it, it had come uh, after a controversial point, I would say. And um, I suppose you'd have to say that's a magnificent goal uh, scored by, I think it was Mark Hagerty that scored it. Uh, but a great ball from James O'Driscoll, Patrick, who had intercepted the ball. And uh, he did well to, to lay it off. So it was a fantastic score. And it, 
and I thought that that score may stay between the teams uh, right up to half time but it hasn't uh, and, and I suppose the big thing is that uh, Harbour Rovers have got back into the game uh, the fact that Liz Gould have reduced have, have played with a sweeper Sure have indeed and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to have a look at the uh, other video as well the controversial score mark um, which uh, unfortunately we're just trying to get pictures of looks very very close uh, from what from the pictures that we're seeing uh, it, it was a shot there from the left hand side from uh, one of the Liz Gould wing forwards he was one of the O'Brien brothers it was at the time just like it's a very hard call to say whether it was inside the post and of course under the new, the new rules if it's over the post it is a wide ball right but it's very hard to say whether yeah. from 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 and, from, and the, from, from I, the camera yeah. angle from from the camera angle from where it is it's very hard to, to conclusively yeah. say that from where we are and certainly I would have to say that 100% of the Harbour Rover supporters who are on that side of the field they would have felt straight away that the ball was definitely wide um it looked as though the umpire had a reasonable look at it, um, but possibly didn't stand back far enough. Um, I'd say, Patrick, if we were in Crow Park, we'd be going definitely for Hawkeye in this situation. Um, but I think, judging by, by, the, um, by the reaction of the Harbour Rovers um, supporters here, that the ball seemed to have went on the left-hand side of the post rather than going inside the post. Yeah, it's a very, very tight call. And, and the breeze, as we've mentioned, Mark, like as we look out in the field it's going from left to right but here in the stand it's actually swirling in a ball and coming back down to the city end here in, in the stand it is swirling it is swirling and you know sometimes you get those breaks and they go for you um, but you'd have to compliment Haver Rovers the way they have come back into the game and you know from a position where they, they weren't getting a whole pile of look in the first 15-20 minutes of the game all the small little decisions were going against them They've lost uh, one player to injury. They had to make another, I'd say, tactical change in bringing on Stephen Dunn, who has had an effect on, the, on their team. Um, like losing, uh, losing their midfielder, Eric O'Donoghue, a, a significant loss as well. So like, things have gone against them, but they are still banging this game. And, and like, you'd have to say, this is like county finals take on a life of their own. And anything can happen in a county final. And we've seen that with a couple of decisions already today. And I've no doubt in the second half that we're going to see more. I won't say controversy, but we're going to see more changing points and turning points in the game. The people will point to us and they'll be saying, Jeez, that went against us and we, got it. we didn't get a bit of luck there or we got a bit of luck there. And that's, like I always say, the harder you try, the luckier you get. So you're bang there now. If you're inside in the dressing room, of either Liz Gould or Harbour Rovers. Well, let's start with the Liz Gould dress room. Jerry Ryan uh, and the two lads from from Ahada, um, Tr- Trigger and Rass and um, yeah, Richie Lewis and Richie Lewis. W- yeah. W- w- what way are you starting here now? Because you're you're okay. The wind is you're you're probably going to be with the wind. Strong breeze in this opening half. Do you stick playing seven defenders and play five uh, forwards inside to allow that space? But are Harbour Rovers closing it down too quickly for them? Well, I I, I think I I wouldn't be giving any team any extra man in a, in my opinion. I thought when they were playing fifteen on fifteen, they were the better hurling team and. They certainly were on the ascendancy. Um, they were, were got they got an awful lot of their scores from play as well. Whereas I think in the Harbour Rover situation, Stephen Camden has probably got all but one of their points. Yeah, nine, 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 nine points, points, six and freeze. Six and freeze. So you'd have to say, and like you know, the three points that he's got from play were very, very good players and are good, good scores from play. But like you're not going to keep a fella like him tied up for the whole game. So you were probably saying just like before the game starts, he's going to get one four, one five. That's the reality. But don't give him two six or two seven. And that's what you would be looking for. Um I I think if Liz Gould are to win it, I think they should revert to a fifteen on fifteen situation. And I think they are slightly better. Uh their hurling is slightly sharper. But I think that the work rate of the Harbour Rovers defence in particular is a way higher and they're winning an awful lot more of the 50-50 balls and they're just they're bringing the ball they're, like they are carrying the ball they're playing it through the lines I see Flanky Flannery is involved in the backroom staff like I suppose the modern game is play it through the lines don't give it away when we were playing it younger it was if the half back got it he was lashing it down the field as far as you could hit it the game has changed significantly I think if I was in the Liz Gould dressing room I'd be saying to the lads, I'd be reverting back to my 15 on 15. And quickly turn her around to Dennis Gallagher, Noel O'Brien, Frankie uh, Flannery. What are they saying? Oh, I'd here be now? saying, lads, you're bang there. You've got yourselves back into the game. You, you've had a couple of hard decisions have gone against you. Probably the look 
that, that went against you in the first half, you may get it in the second half. Don't give up. We are bang there. We have every chance. And when you have a forward like Stephen Condon inside in your full forward line, one or two good balls in there in the second half, that man is capable of getting a goal. So I'd be saying don't concede any freeze. If the Liz Gould forwards are good enough to knock the ball over the bar, let him knock it over the bar, but don't concede easy freeze. Keep doing what you're doing. We've got us back into this game, and we have every opportunity of bringing the Johnny Quirk Cup home tonight. Well, it's all in the melting pot here as the second half of this Co-op Superstores Cork Junior Hurling Championship final gets underway. And it's, it is Harbour Rovers with the opening possession. John O'Sullivan it is with that. Plays a short down in towards the half-forward line. And Liz Gould defending the city end in this second half. Looking to try and clear the lines. Remember, we need a result on the day today. The winner goes into the lower intermediate championship into Group B where they will join the losers of the lower intermediate county final in a fortnight. Castle Marta, Russell Rovers and they'll join Tracton and the Bars in Group B of the 2021 championship. Sideline from John Cronin plays it back short. And Cronin now looking to try and attack this Harbour Rovers defence looking to try and get his own score trying to show like leadership but goes to the left hand side he and doing, a, doing a Kyle Hayes or a Tim O'Mahony on it there coming up the field and bouncing the ball off the ground on this occasion got a good strike off the, but the ball drifted just to the right and wide um, I suppose the, the game is what it's a minute over, over there's a little bit of I suppose feeling out going on Patrick here at the moment there's no real flow to the game at the moment Puck out down towards the centre of the park. Dunn playing it down in towards the corner forward position. Here is the danger man, Stephen Condon, being marshalled here by Quivon O'Shea. O'Shea. O'Shea has dealt with it very well. He's lost his hurley. Pops outside to Shane O'Reardon. And O'Shea O'Reardon, Curly is. It's just dropped short because of the wind. The Glenworth Rover supporters were on their feet, delighted with it. But it just dropped short with that aid of the strong breeze against Harbour Rovers in this second half. Here is Thomas Condon. Playing the ball short down the line to Paula Cannon. He got two points in play last week against Clonakilty. Long ball in from a tight angle. Great score from Hannon. Yeah, well, that's a fantastic score. And I think um, I might be right in saying that that is the first time that Harbour Rovers have led in this county final. A fantastic score. Sure is indeed. After two minutes of the second half, how crucial is that score going to be? And be it Harbour Rovers against the wind. The first time a, a player without the name of Condon scoring for Harbour Rovers in this 2020 final. Puck out to David Point in the centre of the field again. Hannon now working on to a loose ball. Pulls on it in towards the centre forward position here is Peter Condon. But great defence there by Quivon O'Shea. Clears the lines and a chance for Liz Gould to set up a counter attack. There's a man ghosting in here. Quail on O'Brien. But O'Brien just didn't get the hurley on it. And Harbour Rovers now trying to clear the lines. A foul there by Caelan O'Brien on Peter Condon. A free out for Harbour Rovers. And that was a great opportunity. It actually came from Kevin Cashman had mishit the ball and it had broken into the centre forward who failed to pick it the first time. And then he has given away a free. He's actually given away three frees, the last three frees in the game now. And it's significant for, from a Liz Gould point of view that you know, if a person's given away that amount of frees, you have to be looking to the bench to see can we do better. Ball hangs, just hangs and hangs in the air. And it's a chance again for Harbour Rovers. Shane O'Reardon popped the ball out to Davy Pine. And Pine converts the score. And now Harbour Rovers are turning on the taps. They lead by two. Big time, big time. I mean, it has been all Harbour Rovers since the, the second quarter has started. Uh, but Liz Gould are not going to go, die easy, Patrick. They won't go out of this game. But they are certainly playing second fiddle for the last 20 minutes to Harbour Rovers. No score from Liz Gould since the 16th minute. A free for John Cashman, but now a possibly an opportunity to reprieve that. There was a chop of the hurley over on that far side. And it's a free for Cashman inside Liz, the Harbour Rovers 45. Yeah, it's a big free now in the context of the game because it's hard to believe that uh, Liz Gould have gone for 17, 18 minutes without getting a score. And the last seven points that we have seen in this game have all been ha from Harbour Rovers. So a chance for Cashman to tack on another score from place ball for him. It's going in. The umpire is going He's to the done. flag. 
Big he, point. Well, he, he was just deciding what he wanted to do. We really couldn't make out what he was going to do. Yeah. But the reduced back down a to big one. Big score. Great score from Cashman now. Great score from a Liz Gould point of view. Something that I really, really needed. John Cashman's third point in this game as that ball is knocked out over the sideline by a Liz Gould hurley. That's John Cashman. And it's going to be a sideline ball for... Harbour Rovers, the margin back down to one, 12 points playing 1-8, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing in it, absolutely nothing. And just, you know, for people that may not see this off screen, Liz Gould have gone with a two-man inside line. Uh, they're playing a flat two inside the 21. And uh, Mark Hegarty and James O'Driscoll. And inside the, uh, the Harbour Rovers, they're just playing one inside at the edge of the D. Hand out there from Parry Cannon back to the fullback, Brian Gallagher. Gallagher is playing all over towards that far side. There was a tussle back there inside the 65. Snapshot there from John Cashman. Lands short inside the parallelogram. Hagerty with a chance. But that's great defence there from Harbour Rovers. They're trying to clear their lines. Men being pulled, harried and hassled by it's Bart O'Keefe. Well, he just moves the ball forward 15 yards. And a chance now for Declan O'Brien. Trying to evade two, three, four tacklers. Pops the ball outside to James O'Driscoll. And... A referee is given a free. There was a hurley across the leg of a Liz Gould man, and it's going to be a chance for Liz Gould to level up this game yeah, after six a, minutes to second half. A, a little bit unlucky because uh, when I thought when Bart O'Keefe had got the ball in the corner on his left hand side, that his clearance should have been long, but he went for a, a shorter clearance. The, the danger looked like it was, had been averted, but the ball was recycled back in again, and Liz Gould have got a free again. It's not the easiest free in the world, uh, but players like John Cashman have. The ability to stick this, but it's again another vital one. Liz Gould need to get this score to get back on level terms. John Cashman looking to try and level this game, but he's gone to the right and wide mark. And, and in, in a shot like that, it's like a golf shot. You need to be aiming to the left-hand side yeah. to get it across into the right. Again, a pressure-free pressure, pressure free in that situation. Not the easiest free. And again, with the swelling breeze and stuff like that, it's not the easiest thing for free-takers today. So the Avenue champions by one, but that's not the greatest of clearances. And Caelan O'Brien breaking onto this position, shortens the grip of the hurley and levels this game and once again for the sixth time in this game. And that's what you want to see out of your centre-forward. You want to see him catching the ball there and ripping through the, the, the half back line and slapping the ball over the bar. He's pumped up. He's ready for this one, Patrick. So do both O'Brien's brothers with scores one in either half. And Harbour Rovers trying to fight for possession on the floor. John Cashman is in there helping his midfielders and it's cleared by John Cronin. Down towards the Lisgool two-man full forward line. And Breen Gallagher breaking onto the breaking ball out towards Thomas Condon. Condon's under pressure though, oh. and the ball squirted out. Jack Ryan, one on one with the keeper. Ryan with the shot. And, and the Ryan goal. buried it to the back of the net. And Liz Gould with a second sucker punch in this game. Yeah, and that's two sucker punches in a similar vein. A point beforehand from the centre forward, Kevin O'Brien. And great hooking and hassling by the Liz Gould forwards. Dispossessed the Harbour Rovers backs when they're coming out, trying to play it through the lines. Lost the ball. Jack Ryan picked up and cool as a breeze. Slapped it past David O'Sullivan to give Liz Gould a shot in the arm. So it's Liz Gould again converting and going on by three points once again. Is that another purple patch? This time turning the way of Liz Gould. Although a great block there by 38-year-old Brian Gallagher. But again Liz Gould winning possession. Both fullbacks are playing the centre of the field now. Both teams playing two men full forward lines inside the 45. It's very crammed in the centre of the field. Here is Sean Finn. Popping the ball back outside to Stephen Dunn. And that's a great reply That's from a fantastic Rovers. reply from Stephen Dunn. The substitute had come on for Emmett Sheehan. He's had a big influence in this game. And just exactly what Harbour Rovers needed after the goal again conceded. Well, there's been five, six million shots in the arm given over the past 12 months with the jabs. Well, there's a lot of shots in the arm here from the Harbour Rovers supporters. Although Liz Gould might win back of their own. And they have through Keon Cashman. Well, it's starting to loosen up now, Patrick. The scores are coming ticking fast. We've had a goal and two pints for the Liz Gould men and we've had a couple of pints from the Harbour men. This game is really taking off. One three to two points, three points I should say, 
in this second half already in the opening 10 minutes that possession won there by Brian Gallagher but a loose hand pass has knocked the ball out over the side an exciting oh, opening 9 minutes here fantastic it's up, and I said the first minute or two had been a bit lack, lacklustre but the last 7 or 8 minutes have been brilliant but you know if you ask Brian Gallagher before the game would he end up in the middle of the field and, and pick you up his own um, puck out today I doubt it but it'll tell you the, how the, the, hurl, the game of hurling has changed and again what, what we're seeing now off camera is that uh, Harbour Rovers are two inside in the full forward line inside in the square the same as the Liz Gould players puck out over towards the sideline over towards that far side I should say from John Crone who went a long way now to be fair but David O'Sullivan was the first to it it's a loose pass over towards that far side and a chance for Kyle Hickey settles the feed, settles yeah. the stick and big sends score. the ball over the bar. That's a big score. That's a big score. The, the, the Liz Gould centre-back who probably finds himself a lot further forward than you would have expected. He had a chance in the first side, it drifted out to the right-hand side and he scored a fantastic uh, point here now to push out the lead to three points. Player manager Dennis Gallagher getting himself ready oh. here as Haber Overs just stop and play once again over on that far side as a man down injured over there is Bart O'Keefe who's looking for some medical attention and Dennis Gallagher is questioning whether he should come in along with Noel O'Brien and Frankie Flannery but it's been a, a really exciting encounter but as we look out Mark the middle the of the field crammed is, is unbelievable. 24 players it's between unbelie- the 245s. Absolutely, yeah. That's where all the action is happening. That's where the puck are going to be landing. The first thing is get the ball to the ground and then win the ball on the ground. This ball landing into the centre of the park. The wind really having an effect on the trajectory of the possession. Here is David Point popping the ball over the top and Harbour Rovers now need to try and get a further score to enhance their chances of claiming the Johnny Quirk Cup for the first time in their history. This is the 123rd edition of the Cock Hurling Final and in there with a shot going to the left and wide was Conor Dennehy. Yeah, he would have been better off to recycle that ball. Uh, the full-back, uh, Brian Geller, had done well to give him a nice ball in. He'd won it well, but he should have recycled it and kept it in play. Don't ever shoot unless you're 100% certain of scoring. Long puck out here from Kieran Cronin. Wales. This is like a pinball machine. It's landed into the hands of John Cashman. Picks it up cleanly, strikes it over the bar. And the Glamworth supporters are roaring, saying to the left, it was right and wide, but I think that was over the bar, Mark. It looked like it was over the bar, definitely, and I think John Cashman... Now, you know, when the ball goes over the bar, it looks, you know, sometimes it's tailing away, that it look, might, might, might have went wide, but I think it was definitely over the bar. Possession over towards that far side, and again, it is John Cronin who has won it. Great catch there, though, by James O'Driscoll. Look to pop the ball inside to Declan O'Brien. Declan wearing the yellow helmet, wearing number 12 for Liz Gould. The sea of blue and gold standing up once again to our right hand side as that ball's gone over the bar. And now there's two full scores between the sides. Yes, and it has been a, a very good response from Liz Gould. We, had, we discussed at half time, you know, what would, what would Liz Gould be doing? And they did revert, certainly. They have pushed their forwards up the field and they are certainly creating more goal scoring and point scoring opportunities for their team. Uh, but there has been a general lift in their play, Patrick. I think that the point that John Cashman scored over on the shed side of the field, out by the sideline, was a settling factor. And obviously the turnover goal that they got, where the Harbour Rovers defence were coming out of the ball and just turned over, and Jack Ryan struck it, that has been a huge fill-up for them in, the, in this third quarter. Brendan Barry Murphy is telling David O'Sullivan to speed up the process of this puck out. Coming up to the conclusion of the 43rd minute, in this Co-op Superstars Cork Junior A Hurling Championship Final. Possession over on that far side over there. Fighting is Jason Hagerty. And also over there is John Cronin, captain of this side. Sending that ball short into the corner. Looking for the goal scorer, Mark Hagerty, from the first half. As a substitution for Harbour Rovers after going in. Dennis Gallagher has gone inside into the half forward line. Connor Denny, who came on as a first half substitute, has made his way off the field. Liz Gould looking to try and gain possession. Jack Ryan in there. Also there from a Harbour Rovers point of view is John O'Sullivan. But it is Kyle Hickey from the Immokili Club. Sending that ball short to John Cashman. Pops the ball long and there's a foul there on the Glen Rovers man to push the back. As there's a fourth substitution coming here from Harbour Rovers. John Landers is the man who's going to be making his way in. No relation, Patrick. 
The voice He's of Mark Landers, 95 <laughs> junior winner. Of course, with Killer when they made their way through the processes before winning the Intermediate Championship in 2001. And just waiting to see the fourth officials over on the far side. And there's a bit of a get to know each other inside there. And his battle key for man who came out injured while ago has been replaced. There's a free been taken by Thomas Condon. Long inside again. Oh my God, what a catch there by David Point. Sends the ball short in towards Shane O'Reardon. And what can O'Reardon do from here? Well, he beats his defender the first time. But that's a great tackle in there by John Cronin. And the referee and the umpire is suggesting it is a 45. And the Ahabolic official is going to con yeah, great, consider it great, done. Great play, great play by John Cronin to get back Shane, Shane uh, O'Reardon, who, to be fair, has had a very good game for Harbour Rovers. He's been on a lot of ball over the course of the game. Was bearing down on goals. And probably they need a, a goal to get themselves back into this game. Cronin waited for your man to put up the, 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 the ball onto his hurley and just flicked it out for a 65. So Stephen Condon looking for his 10th point of this Cork Junior a Hurling Championship final as we come to the conclusion of the third quarter. Just going to the right hand side and wide. And that is where the second half water break is going to be taken, Mark. And where Harbour Rovers got off to a brilliant start in the opening four minutes. It's been all this ghoul since the 35th minute, scoring 1-5 to one point in the last 10 minutes. And that, that tells you the story, uh, probably of the both first quarters, Patrick, of both halves. Well, Liz Gould won the first quarter and the third quarter. They had scored, make significant inroads, and particularly on the scoreboard from play as well. Uh, they have hurled extremely well. I would probably say that, that Harbour Rovers uh, expended an awful lot of energy, I think, in the second quarter to get themselves back into the game. But there's no doubt uh, in this second half that it has been owned by Liz Gould. And more, and, and probably the main feature of that, Patrick, is that their defence has been very, very tight and they have got good ball into the forward line. And I suppose the goal that Jack Ryan got was significant insofar that it was, it was a ball that looked like it was going to be cleared. It was overturned. Good play by the Liz Gould forwards overturned the Harbour Rovers defender on the way out. And Jack Ryan, in fairness to him, took on the ball got it to his position where he felt safe to strike it and struck it with a plan past David O'Sullivan. But there is a significant breeze and it has probably picked up slightly as well, Patrick, I would say, in the second half as well. That's behind Liz Gould. And I would say, you know, 12 months now of hard training and graft and sacrifices being made by both sets of teams. <coughs> You're looking for one drive, one last drive out of your players. What Harbour Rovers will be looking for here, they'll be trying to get the ball to Stephen Condon. What Liz Gould obviously will be trying to do, stop the ball going into their full forward line because I don't see, I don't see them railing in a six-point deficit against the Breezes there. You could end up with Liz Gould, I would say, maybe putting in somebody as a sweeper on the edge of the D to try and cut out that inside ball. But Kieran Cronin with an absolute monster puck out and scoring so far, it could actually run. Uh, wide at some stage but this one hasn't on this occasion Sean Finn playing possession some superb feeling here by David Point in this second half so far from Harbour Rovers point of view and Harbour Rovers now need to get a couple of quick scores to try and get back into this fourth quarter quick ball by Kieran Cashman to John Cronin Cronin falling to the floor Brendan Barry Murphy being very consistent around that so far this afternoon Cronin pulls in the ball first time, and that just could break the possession on this occasion. Possession ends up the floor, and Declan Bryan has been turned over. Advantage for John O'Sullivan. It's going to land in towards the edge of the square. It's going to land in. It's gone for a penalty. Whoa, it's it for a penalty here. Oh, what a great Brendan Barry Murphy. You know, he was 40 yards away, and the referee is saying there was a pull of the hurley inside there. No doubt about the decision. It's inside a parallelogram. It is a penalty. I'd love to see a replay of it, Patrick, to be honest with you, because it looked like to me he had awarded a free out the field. Sorry, he hadn't awarded a free. He had, he had signalled for advantage being played out the field. Um, I think there's a bit of controversy here, Patrick, now, because I don't think he's going to be, he's going to be awarding a penalty. And he seems to be awarding a free from inside. So maybe he allowed advantage to develop, okay, so and then he's giving another free for yeah. 
But it wasn't so, the penalty, it was so, a free. Yeah, so what he's actually saying is a free for pulling the jersey, I which, think is, so. which is not an aggressive foul. So he is right in what I, he's I actually saying. I think so, saying. yes, I okay. think so. But yeah. I think so, everybody thought he was awarding a yeah, penalty. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's the whole controversy about well, the penalty. Condon with the shot, he might have to go for it. He does, and he goes over the bar. But just to clear that up, of course, a pull of the jersey inside the parallelogram, inside the big box, is yeah. only a free. But if it's inside the small square, all fouls in the small square are a penalty. Yes, yes, that's correct. So 2.13 plays 14 points as the puckle from Kieran Cronin over towards that far side. And as the old cliche goes, the next score could be very crucial in this game as the Harbour Rovers defender has knocked that ball out over the sideline over that far side of the field. But again, good pressure being applied by the Leeds goal forward because John Landers was going back to pick the ball and he was, he was harried, I think, by James O'Driscoll and he forced him out over the sideline uh, to turn and, and it's going to be a line ball for Liz Gould, which is exactly what you want out of your forwards. Mark Hagerly now, just outside the 21-metre fly. He's going to try and go for a cut, of course, with the aid of a strong breeze. He's going to play from right to left. It's going all the way in. It's going all the way in. It's gone in and over the bar. Joe My God, what a great score from Hagerty. <laughs> Joe Canning, eat your heart out. Uh, fantastic score. And it looks as though Liz Gould, any few breaks that, that, that are coming their way, they'll seem to be seizing at them. And again, I go back to the fact of James O'Driscoll turning over the ball and getting him the opportunity for the line ball. It's a great score from Hagerty from the sideline over on that far side of the field. And Harbour Rovers just not using possession cute enough. And that time it was Jack Collin who turned it over. And also, be at that time John Cronin with not the greatest of possessions down towards Mark Hagerty. Doing very well there was John Cashman who just went out over the sideline. It's going to be a line ball for Harbour Rovers on that it's, far side. You'd also have to say that Patrick that, that John Cronin is starting to have a big influence back in the game again, having been uh, marshalled well by Stephen Dunn in the second quarter, but in the third quarter and the start of this fourth quarter here, he has upped his game and he's playing a captain's role now. As that ball from the sideline lands short, and it, here is Cashman once again, he's being harried and hassled, and a chance now for Liz Gould to try and set up another attack, but not to graze the balls, and obviously nerves now are starting to get in on the active players, although John O'Sullivan's chance was hooked there on that occasion there was a pull of the hurley there clearly by Peter Condon it's a free out for Liz Gould and a chance a chance for John Cashman from halfway between the 45 and 65 he does have the distance the question is does he have the accuracy yeah. Stephen Condon had pointed from a similar position in the first half so it'll be a case of you know what can I do can I do better I suppose in this situation but you'd have to say with 49 minutes played Liz Gould are two goals up and they are in a driving seat at this moment in time. And, you know, it'll take a huge effort from Harbour Rovers to get themselves back into this game. Cashman with the shot going in long ways, but doesn't have the accuracy as Stephen Condon had in that first half, going to the left-hand side and wide. As the possession played out over towards that far side to Thomas Condon, tries to set up another attack as the ball hangs in the air. John Cronin read it very, very well indeed. Carl Hickey. Been told to play on by the referee, Kieran Cashman. Long ball inside to Marco Driscoll, but great defence there by Sean Finn. And Finn winning possession short. Here's David Point. Point scoops it back to these Harbour Rovers wing back, Sean Finn. Doing very well on the Glamour side, but great catch inside there by John Cronin. He's been brilliant in this second half, as Mark has mentioned. He's starting to take control of the halfback line, gets a hand and scoops it over towards that far side. Cute play from the Lisgool captain to his centre back. Carl Hickey with a raking shot ah, and a raking score. Score oh again. my God. Unbelievable score. Score again. Score again. Absolutely fantastic from Cronin. Won a huge ball in the rock. The ball had gone away from him and he threw himself and hand passed it out sideways. And Carl Hickey nailed it from 100 yards. And the ball's been turned over here. Short pocket hasn't worked out well. A chance for this goal. Attack on a further score. Is that the insurance score from Jack Ryan? They're going in on the clear. It would look so, Patrick, at this stage, another, another puck out, which has been turned over by the Liz Gould forwards. So eight points the difference, 2.16 to 14 points, and we're inside the final 10 minutes as, again, Davy Point winning another free, another puck out in the centre of the field, I should say. Played it to Sean Finn, looking to try and play a scoop ball over the top to Shane O'Reardon. And O'Reardon was blocked inside there. Also, there was Dennis Gallagher. Just couldn't get the grasp of it, and a chance for Liz Gould to clear their lines. Kieran Cashman, ball over the top from Cashman, playing it long. But again, in fairness to Davy Point, he's he, been everywhere he's been in this everywhere. second half. He's been fag 
fantastic. There's words that couldn't describe the game that David Pine is having. He's been magnificent all through. And a chance here for Hammer Rovers. They mightn't be out of it yet. Sean Finn with the shot. Play the ball inside to Dennis Gallagher. A great tackle inside there by the Lisgul defence. Shot. A great save, save by Kieran Patrick Cronin. The McKinley manager coming to Lisgul's rescue. But danger not averted. Ball being played across the square. Pulling the first time. Going to the right hand side. It's actually knocked out by Kieran Patrick Cronin. What a shot inside there by the Liz or by the by Stephen Dunawals. And a first time blank point save by Kieran Cronin. And Patch Cronin, come at the hour, come at the man. Magnificent save. It, probably the save that will break Haber. Rovers hats tonight. They will point to the fact. Now, the game isn't over, but it would have been a huge shot in the arm to get a goal at this stage of the game to give them a chance to reel in Liz Gould. This ball's walked in short from the 65, walked in towards Finn. Finn towards the edge of the square. It's gone out. It's going to be knocked out. Going for a wide ball. 65. He's it has now, to be 65. Yeah, Brendan Barry Murphy is overruled. He's umpire and it's going to be a, another 65. So what? We're inside the final eight minutes and eight points the difference and we have a nice bit of injury time to come yet, Mark. We have. I mean, the game is far from over and we saw in the second quarter how Harbour Rovers had come into the game. But, it, I, you know, Liz Gould are going to be tested here. They're going to have to get a goal to get back into it. They're going for the juggler. Our Harbour Rovers There's a man inside with possession. Here is done. Buried it. This time it does. It going to the side netting to the right and wide. And again, Brendan Barry Murphy is questioning the decision. And you know, he's going back in to the umpires now to speak to again. <laughs> there's a lot of action. There's a lot of action in that side of the field at the moment. And I think far is it the third or the fourth occasion. I'd say the referee's going to rave this one definitely wide. And maybe that the chance that Harbour Rovers need a Patrick to get the goal to get themselves back into the game, that maybe the chances eluded them at this stage. Kieran Cronin, quick puck out. John Cashman didn't see it. Now he turns on the bus to speed to try and get to it. Also, there was the Harbour Rovers cornerback doing brilliant work there. It looks like yeah, Philip Blackburn. And Blackburn coming out of the bottom of the rock with possession. Out again to Davy Point. He's covered nearly every blade of grass in Parky Rin this afternoon. Possession in the centre of the park, all crucial now at this juncture. John O'Sullivan it is. Shortens the stick, playing it into the corner forward position. And Harbour Rovers need scores. Here's their talisman, Stephen Condon. Ten points this afternoon. Convert that, chalk that down, make it 11. Yeah, he's a very, very good pa player, Patrick. And if he gets good quality ball, he has all the skills. He has great balance, great poise. And he's a fantastic, uh, he's a fantastic striker of the ball. So we're coming up to the... 55th minute of the game. Liz Gould 2 16. Harbour Rovers 15 points as this long puck out lands inside the 21 metre line. But again, it is Harbour Rovers who are winning possession. Brian Gallagher, it is on this occasion walking through the lines. Davy Pine from Thomas Condon and Pine sends it long to the top of the right. Entertainment value of the highest order here this afternoon. And again, it's the sea of blue and gold defensively have held out defensively very strong. In this game, Declan O'Brien, long ball in towards the full forward line. James O'Driscoll wasn't tall enough for the handling, and John Landers, no relation to my co-commentator, clears his lines out towards Thomas Condon, and Condon playing a long ball up the line, but it's gone out over the sideline, and it's a sideline ball over that far side, halfway between the 45 and 65. A chance for a sideline cut here, Mark. And you can even see the linesman as he holds his flag up. The, the strength of the actual breeze that's here today is very, very significant. Um, you know, five minutes for Liz Gould now to, I suppose, not concede any scores, see it out, bring home the Johnny Quirk, and probably a week of celebrations. You know, I think the first time winning the, uh, the County Junior A Championship, it's a magnificent performance. Having, I suppose, gone out of the game in the second quarter, great credit to Harbour Rovers who got themselves back into the game. But the second half has been owned by, by Liz Gould. And I suppose it's a case of uh, no concession of freeze now. Keep the ball in play and don't do anything silly. Mark Hagerty looking for his second score from the sideline. Cut, oh my God. That is absolute brilliant skill, Mark. Ah, uh, it's a fan and that's his second time doing that. That one was 45 yards out, 50 yards out. And it's magnificent on a day of a county final to cut two line balls over the bar. The skill levels of the players at junior level here has been fantastic today. And again, Davy Point winning another magnificent buck out from the centre of the field once again. Turning his man there was Peter Condon. Plays a shot for his brother Stephen. And Stephen's won a free. There's a push there by Quivon O'Shea. And it's going to be, well, he thought about trying to take the quick one to try and play it into the one-on-one -on -one situation to Dennis Gallagher. 
But Stephen Condon is going to have to settle. And in fact, there's a substitution here. Jerome Fitzgibbon is coming into the game. And we're just waiting for to see who the player coming out is going to be. There is a man making his way off the field. And we'll gather that number in a moment. But Jerome Fitzgibbon in and a chance for Condon. Puts top spin on top of the ball. That went in like a spiral shot. But it's been cleared out by Kieran Cashman. And Cashman looking to try and play it down in front of us here to Claylon O'Brien, who just buries the ball long and towards the full forward line. Two men inside her. Looks for Mark Hagerty. That squirts to the right-hand side and wide. And there's a substitution down in front of us. It is Stephen Dunn, it is, yeah. coming on for it Mark is. The, the two lads that have come on in the course of the first half have both been substituted. Uh, they've given their all. I'd say they, they, were, they were brought on to as, as uh, tactical substitutions, Patrick. And... Um, Probably the, the significance of, of the way John Cronin has turned it back into the game, that they just wasn't able to handle him. So Kieran Cronin being ushered by a referee to speed up the process of the puck goal. Kieran Cronin sending it over towards that far side. Uh, is it going to be a famous day for the small little village from Liz Gould? As they won their first James E. Kelleher Cup only just last September, winning a Junior B County final only a couple of years ago. We we'll still have a couple of minutes to go left in this one, but two minutes of regulation time before the additional time to be awarded. John Cronin setting a long ball in towards the keeper, all the way in and over the bar. Mm. Captain Supremo standing up as any leader should. Yeah, well, that just caps a magnificent performance from John Cronin. Um, he had a great first quarter. Had gone out of the game slightly with the influence of Stephen Dunn, but he, like, like any good captain, he has grabbed hold of the game in the second half and has led from the front for his team. And, and he's capped a fantastic performance with a point from 100 yards off his left hand side. Luke Welch is coming into the play instead of Caelan O'Brien, who's had a superb game here in Park Irene as we come down to the final 90 seconds of this 123rd staging of the Cork Junior A Hurling Championship. Coming to a conclusion, we've had seven goals in this championship over six matches, but this undoubtedly has been the most entertaining game, and it mightn't be just over so far yet. Stephen Condon looking to try and take on the sweeper side. Oh, oh what a save inside there by Kieran Cronin, but that was hitting to the roof of the net. What a rasper, what a rasper from Condon, um, and, and an equally fantastic save from Patchy Cronin and goals. That's two magnificent saves he has made in the second half. I think the, sec the other one was from Condon as well. You know, 218 to 216. If the two of them nestled in the back of the net, Patrick, we'd, we'd have had a way tighter game. But a great save from Patchy Cronin late in the game. As Liz Gould now starting to wash on the substitutions, Declan O'Brien making his way off the field. So the two O'Brien brothers are off. This time it's Bill Whelan coming into the fray as this puck out sent long once again away from the Liz Gould goal as we've three minutes of additional time to be added on here at the end of the half, at the end of this game. And there's a free in for the pull of the jersey on Mark Hagerty as we come to the start of those three minutes any second. Yeah, good play again by Mark Hergery. I, I, I mentioned Mark Hergery and, and young O'Driscoll inside in the full forward line. They have worked tirelessly for their team. They have turned over ball. They have scored goals. They have scored line balls. They have done everything those two in the full forward line. And they have, they have played a massive part in the James E. Keller Cup going back to Liz Gould this evening. There's three minutes left on the clock, but I can't see Haber Rovers getting three goals at this stage. Patrick? Five points to the name of John Cashman this afternoon. As player, play continues on, Bill Whelan has got a chop in his hand on the hurley, I should say, from his own 65. As the players are, or as the patrons are asked to stay in the stands, the presentation is going to be made in front of us out in the field. But John Cashman, to put the icing on the cake, really, nine points in it here as we come to the conclusion of that first minute of injury time. Three minutes has been awarded by a Rahabalog official, John Cashman, looking for his sixth point of the game. It goes, though, to the right-hand side and wide as another Liz Gould substitution, Kieran Cronin. <laughs> Not too often you see substituting in keepers. We saw one in the Munster football final when Mark White came on for Michal Le Martin. At that occasion, it was a shoulder, but the two keepers being swapped here, Massey O'Connell, one of the greats, Junior B ah, stalwarts. Fantastic. In. Ah, that's fantastic to see Massey coming on and to be getting the County Junior A medal on the field to play. Great, great decision by the uh, the lines, by the, the men in charge of his goal. As there's another shot going in here, Mark, from Keen Scannell. Scannell has been doing all the dirty work in the middle of the field, but didn't get clean possession on that occasion. 
And a chance for Harbour Rovers to try and clear their line. Steve, or Thomas Condon, I should say, trying to play it up short. And uh, Glamworth looking to try and get a goal of their own. Here's Pori Cannon, long ball in over the top, going to the left hand side and wide. And we will see Mossy Connell have a possession in this game. One of the great stalls from this goal. Well, they've gone through the years. They were a senior football club back in 1888. They lost the first ever senior football championship to the Lees. Four points to one. They were established in 1887. It's going to be a famous, famous day for the people of this goal. Lim Lara and Ballon McCurrig. What a day it's going to be. The first ever James E. Keller Cup in 2020. It's going to be the first ever County Junior A Hurling Championship in 2020 when they will move into the 2021 Championship for the first time under the auspices of the Cork County Board. And it's all over. And it's a famous day for the sea of blue and gold. The people of Liz Gould, Lim Lara and Ballon Curry with a famous, famous day. And you can see the emotions, the celebrations out in the field. They've beaten Harbour Rovers, a very gallant Harbour Rovers. 219 to 16 points. Well, they've gone crazy. The supporters have gone crazy. The players have gone crazy. And with good justification. This is absolutely magnificent for the small club in Liz Gould. Playing their trade for, in the Junior B for a long time. They have won it fair and square. Winning the James E. Keller last year for the first time. And now winning the Johnny Quirk. It is absolutely magnificent for the club. Um, you know. It has been a fierce up and down game, Patrick. Their metal was tested right through the game. You know, from probably being really, really good in the first quarter, lo losing their way in the second quarter, and then, in fairness, they turned it back into the game in the second half, and they proved they were a slightly better team overall and are deserving, deserving county champions. And you can see their uh, supporters are absolutely going crazy here. I don't know how many is here, Patrick, but it feels like there's a couple of thousand people here and they are really going to enjoy this victory this evening. Well, the people in Liz Gould and Lara and Ballon of Curry, whether here or your home, it is a famous, famous day to be associated with coming Lucas Gray, Liz Gould. 1887, they were established. They didn't win too many hurling championships in their decades, but only, what, two decades ago, they won the Junior B County Championship. They've been a long time to win James E. Keller Cup. They went close over the past couple of years, defeated by Russell Rovers in 2019 in the quarter final. They were defeated in 2018 in the semi final, but in 2020, they reached the top. The, it, they were anointed figures across the across the East Cork Mark, winning the James E. Keller Cup, defeating Carrick Navarre, and they've made the trip to Parky Rin to win a successful and be successful for the first ever County Junior A Championship. Yeah, this is magnificent. It's it's absolutely fantastic. And I look, I, I know what it feels like. We win it, win it in '95 for the first time ever in the history of the club, and this is exactly it's exactly the same situation. But I have to say, all over the field, they had star players, uh, particularly, I think, in the forwards, where James O'Driscoll, John Cashman and Mark Higgerty were outstanding in the course of the game. And then, obviously, you have to look at this, the centre-back, uh, John Cronin. I suppose he was number seven, but he played in the number six position. And Cahill Hickey was also outstanding as well. Um, if I can push I think, you for a, a man yeah, of the I, match I, this I, afternoon, Mark. I, I, and you know what? I, I would say... Um, I, I would give it to John Cronin is the man of the match, in my opinion. Um, I, I like in, in the overall context of the game. Special mention for um, Brian Gallagher, fullback for uh, for Harbour Rovers. I thought David Pine in the middle of the field was fantastic all through, and Tom Condon and, Sh and Stephen Condon were excellent. But obviously then on the Leeds Gould side, they had really really good performances, particularly the two corner forwards. The amount of donkey work that they did. The turning over a ball, the scoring of goals, scoring of sideline balls. And then in the back line, I thought Cahill Hickey was outstanding, very steady all through. But John Cronin, for me, will be the man of the match. Mark, this uh, is scenes <coughs> like you'd see in the All-Ireland Final in the old days when the wires were up in Club Park 25 years ago. You were there yourself in 1999. But people jumping up in the wire just to get with their fans yeah, and their supporters. I, it's a famous, it, famous day. Well, it's been quite unusual, I suppose. We, we have been in strange times for the last uh, 20 months with COVID and stuff like that. And, you know... The lucky people that are here today, you'd have to say, you know, they're really, really lucky that they're actually being allowed in to watch the match. And the, the players have done what all players will do. They're respecting their supporters and they're saying, thank you for coming up. We've done it for you. They're, like these players are representing their families, their friends, the people of Liz Gould here today. They're bringing back their cup. And I see Massey O'Connell there coming out there now, um, you know. It is fantastic to see Massey getting onto the field today and the field of play.
Right, let's get the presentation from Cork County Board Chairperson Mark Sheehan, who's going to be presenting the Man of the Match Award and the Johnny Cork Cup to Captain of Lisgool momentarily, John Cronin, who's after having, well, a, a massive couple of years, as Mark mentioned during commentary, three county senior medals with him, McKilly, along with his brother, Kieran Cronin, who's been in the management scene. John Cashman has been on that squad. Liam O'Shea, a man who was suspended for today's game, is uh, there amongst the crowd as well. It's a really famous, famous day for the Immokilly Club. And Mark Sheehan is going to be taking us through the presentation momentarily has just been set up in front of us. It's a famous day, of course. Don't forget tonight, we've got a second county final coming to you live on the Irish Examiner live streaming service as we bring you the Cork County Co-op Superstars Intermediate A Hurling Championship final between Ahabullock and Airog, the local derby. That'll be throwing in at 7 o'clock. We'll be on air just after 6.30 this evening. Great crowd, great atmosphere here today throughout the game. What well, was a great game. And let's take in... The presentation from Cock County Board Chairperson Mark Sheehan. And, and, and like, he, he told you to put on, and that's all you can ask of any team. 
and we would be happy if we got a local chance there. You would have done your pole and scored, and you'd come again, you'd go back and down the dunes, and we'd sort of try to knock you, but you'd be up there to the fourth of the very game. They'd keep knocking on the door. And firstly, I grabbed a few people there, and after the James and Kelleher, I wanted to thank him. Firstly, I want to thank our sponsor, Runway Transport. And this is the last time I had James in my hands. I thought Michael John Wayne's great, I can't think that we have done first back with him. Please God, and we have a good will. Every local business of fight, not only uh, sponsorship but local employment. We like to thank you and thank you because you wouldn't be here without you. And uh, everything counts to such a small community. Uh, to the four teams that were left standing during COVID time, you want to say gratitude to the Harbour Rovers, Jemina, our church on Parasite, um, and Sunny Kitchens. That the adaptation and flexibility you showed was, uh, was very was courageous in, your, in what you wanted to do for your clothes, and you never know, set the goal. Especially, these men behind me, countless times, came to cancel the one now, but we were all respectable, we were all adaptable, and they showed it there today. Everyone they chipped you down, and they had to go to the well. The well, like I said, on Thursday, they were going to drive with these guys, but they're fighting two in there for everything. And it's a great time to be part of the school. You see them the flag, even the people up in the stand. They meant to ask through war, but see flags flying, the well wishes from abroad. It, I could not put into words how much it means to us and means to me. So I want to say a round of applause there for the community. They have gone around this local club. I see a lovely message there from Kaisul, all the various clubs and well wishes as well. I'd like to thank you all because each journey starts with a small step for one another. I don't know, a step in our journey. We go on our people. People behind the scenes that are there every Tuesday for this Sunday with the daily and people know. I have to mention this man first and foremost, Dan Kelleher. <laughs> that man is up this morning at half four to do a job. He goes to Dublin and he's back for the match to take out here. I don't think I've ever heard of a man with such courage and dedication uh, to the cause. Everything he wants to be had. And he didn't think at all. He's so he said, I want to hear it. He didn't know the law, he's been a crafty and a farmer, so he's all in between the two days, but he always has to, always there to give Dan a hand because Dan couldn't do it by himself. And to Willie Ryan, our psychologist, our physio, our, our go to guy for every little legal or small thing that we have, that we talk to him. Um, I can't I can't say enough to fellas there. I just bleak for a few minutes, couldn't play. Um, and he got a ruddy. Like what the, you couldn't put into words at the moment because he's done it behind the scenes. You know what we're gonna put it? He left the two small children, but that's only he only comes out to the second the money to shoot from all in. Um, to Cat and Jerry, behind the scenes that no one else sees, that we all come to us every day at a half time, every quarter, all our turnovers one another, laid out to us. Thank you very much, Cat and Jerry. <laughs> to Joe Lombard, I think you see his value there. I never seen Tom make so many saves in the match during the last two matches that he came on board. Thank you very much, Joe. And of course, the three white men, Trevor Ritchie and Jerry Owen, and a trio. Thanks very much, lads. We have to be ever say but like I said, this is only a small step in the journey. We'll go again now in a few weeks' time, because we're in the so no. We need the rest of the to kill you out of here. And to the people in the crew, right? Thank you very much. In times at the moment, but okay, so to just celebrate accordingly and be up to the thrill and action. There's a rock of the behind these for our vulnerabilities.
One of the great speeches from John Crone, and he's uh, renowned for being a great speech maker over the past couple of seasons. He produced a great speech back in the East Cork final in September. And again, John Cronin with another a rounding speech. Mark, just to wrap up the game, because I do want to briefly touch with the other in the semi-finals just for a minute. Yeah. But this match, crucially won in the in the third quarter when they from the 35th minute to the 46th, Liz Gould scoring 1-5 one one to, to a point. To a point. That, and that's really where the, the game was won because, you know, we, we mentioned at halftime what would be said at halftime. Like, it was a case of maybe reverting to 15 and 15 and going back and just spoke to Christy Connery there and he felt the same as I did. That, that he said that thought that Liz Gould had better hurlers over the course of the game but then Harbour Rovers were going to die in their boots which is exactly what happened. But I, I think, Patrick, crucially, the, the two goals for Liz Gould probably are the two major scores that were there today and they came from turnover balls where the Liz Gould forwards had nipped in and took the ball uh, one was an intercepted uh, puck out and the other one was a Harbour Rovers defender coming out and he was hassled uh, Ali with that then put on two sideline balls and the magnificent performance and uh, both Kyle Hickey and John Cronin in the half back line who got a couple of fantastic scores I think in the overall context Liz Gould are just a slightly better team but Harbour Rovers as John Cronin said in his speech they died in their boots and the brave mention I suppose to I thought David Pine was outstanding in the middle of the field for them along with Stephen Cronin uh, Stephen Condon sorry up front so no, no, like it's a lonely place for the Harbour Robbers players tonight. But they can say that they probably have come up against probably one of the better hurling teams in a county final. Today. And I'm not sure if people caught it at home, but he also mentions Clan Kilty and Drum Tariff who were beaten last week. That's right. Like all these four clubs have been waiting nine months, ten massive, months at this stage. Massive, you know, yeah. a lot of effort has to go in over the past ah, ten it's, months. It's, it's, you know, it's tough going. Like like any year when you set out at the start of the year in your January and February, and you're making your plans and you're setting your targets and you're looking to get to a county final, but then to get to the closing stages last year the championship and to have the suspension the club championship suspended when you're at semi-final stage is very difficult and and look I would say some clubs would, would, would have went down from that um, I certainly know Clannock Kilty probably would have suffered from that because they're probably seen as a, as a senior football team and it was bad it was hard for them I'd say to get back on the horse I suppose in Dran Carroll's situation you know the fact that they have Conor O'Callaghan was a big boost for their club um, over the last couple of months he captained the Cork under 20s to win the All-Ireland but I think in the overall context from a, from a, a Holland point of view I think Liz Gould possibly had a, a better spread of hurlers today uh, they found their scores easier to come by and they got a significant amount of scores from play as well I think they're worthy champions but great credit to Harbour Robbers as well who, who, who put it right down to the wire and, and, and only for the two probably intercepted goals the game would have probably went to the wire OK let's just briefly Mark I want to touch with the two semi-finals and breaking news coming to us that actually the f- this evening semi-final is actually going to be pushed back to half five there was uh, well, something that you would know very well uh, uh, there was a big crash an overturned hay truck uh, <laughs> uh, up in the Nace Road and right. the M7 has delayed the match until half five so we're about an hour away to go before that semi-final yeah. but quickly within 30 seconds the the verdict on the two semi-finals. At, for, for me on the, the the Limerick game, I think the Limerick are, are worthy um, favourites for the championship. I think they'll be very very hard to beat. Um, the the biggest question whether um, Waterford can um, sustain. I think the fourth or the fifth championship match in a row. I think that's going to be a big question. I think Limerick are coming in fresh, and I think I would see Limerick probably winning that semi-final with a few points to spare. Uh, on the Cork uh, Kilkenny game my view at the start of the week was that I thought Kilkenny would have had the upper hand because they've had three weeks to um, to prepare for the game but on seeing the Cork team and seeing the Cork panel last night I'm starting to sway towards and get a bit more confident about Cork's chances Are you surprised I, with Shane Barrett's in- inclusion I am over surprised Shane I, I, I do, Well Shane Shane has been in and his form has been up and down he's had three goals in the championship which is a big thing I think he would thrive in Crow Park as well I think is a tough call on Keon Kingston he's then in charge of the team uh, to, to, to deliver that kind of news that you're not going to be starting but look this is a team game and the most important thing is that Shane Kingston will, will probably be the first forward coming into the team tomorrow that he is ready to come on I, I certainly would have felt that they may have held Shane Barrett because he has proved to be very very good coming in Um I, I don't know, Patrick. This is like a. This is very, very hard to call this game. You know, in a word, I think if Cork will get to the front early, I think you have a great chance of winning the game. Okay. Look, Mark Landers, thanks very much for joining us. And if you want a further preview, a more in-depth preview of this weekend's All Ireland semi-finals, don't forget Limerick and Waterford now delayed at five thirty, so you have time. 
tune in to Dale's Hurling Podcast, which was released on Thursday night. Catch up there, and you'll hear Anthony Daly, TJ Ryan, Mark Lanners, and Ken Hogan previewing the two semi-finals before you get to throw in the ball. And don't forget to rejoin us a little bit later on this evening. We've got the Cork Intermediate Day Hurling Championship final from air between Airog and Ahabolog down in Parky Cueve. Throw-ins at 7. We'll be on air from 6.30. My thanks to Mark Landers, to Kieran on sound, and to Johnny on uh, camera. My name is Patrick Wilkay. We'll catch you a little bit later on. A famous, famous day for the Imakili side Liz Gould, who have defeated Haber Rovers in the first ever County Junior A Championship final, defeating them 219 to 16 points. God bless, and we'll talk to you all again soon.